Good evening, everyone! Hope you're all doing well! Better than I'm doing at the very least, YouTube has decided that tonight is the night! It's gonna have every technical difficulty in the book, so you're gonna notice that the thumbnail's wrong, the title is wrong, because I definitely didn't accidentally put a typo in there, and I don't dare touch anything now at this point, um, because... What if it just blows things up even more? But we're gonna try our best to play Banjo-Tooie HD tonight! Um, hope everything holds together! This might just be the beginning of an avalanche of technical difficulties, so so stay tuned. Don't touch that dial. And yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a great start already, but hope you're all doing well here. Uh, welcome, uh, Daniel, Brady, Ma Maokutsu. Welcome, Block Frog. Minecraft says Daniel. Yeah, so you know maybe maybe the Minecraft thumbnail will get more people to click. I think Minecraft has more fans than uh, these days. Than, uh, than Banjo Tui, so we shall see. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Banjo Tui time finally. I spent a whole three more dollars on the Banjo Tui theme, which picks like the most random part of the game to show. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, it's a good one though. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Uh, hopefully, all is well. But yeah, we're gonna go over to our games tab then. And we're going to see that we finished up Banjo-Kazooie last time. 200 out of 200 gamer score. And we got Banjo-Tooie tonight with a thumbnail that makes a lot more sense compared to the original one. Which, like, that's not even from the original game. This one actually makes a little bit more sense. We hear you. Thank you so much, Ma KCC. Space Harrier Theme Extreme Rack. That's correct. That's my starting soon music, which I will now turn down because we're going to be listening to that sweet, sweet Banjo Tui soundtrack. Hopefully, fingers crossed that this works. <laughs> I did not boot the game up to do a preliminary check beforehand because in case there's like a, a special message that appears or something for stop and swap for the first time you play it. Because in theory, once we play Banjo Tui and have the Kazooie and Tui save files on the same hard drive, we should be able to go back and collect the stop and swap items from Banjo Kazooie. In theory, <laughs> doesn't seem like anything's going according to plan right now. Um, but yeah, we'll see how many people actually click on the video because of the hilarious title and thumbnail. If you want, like, the legit stuff, though, go to the Twitch channel, which is probably still in the description, which may or may not still be the Minecraft description. And, uh, over there, there's, like, no, I don't think, uh, you know, Twitch doesn't really have thumbnails, and, uh, thankfully, I think Hack and Quack can help get the correct title up on that side, so. <laughs> so, hopefully we're all good, but alright, everyone, are you ready? Are you ready for Banjo 2? We finally, hopefully, maybe. You have 2,500 gamer score you got up. Nice, Daniel. That's higher than mine. Still have the original N64 cartridges for sure, right? Yeah, the, the, it's you know, still great to play on the original N64. I'm excited to see what it looks like in HD here. <laughs> Game theory. All right. Here we go. All right. Black screen so far. White screen that says Xbox Live Arcade so far. And here we go. So normally it would be showing a spinning Nintendo 64 logo there. But instead, it's now just as rare. Yeah, wow, they really kind of messed up the beginning here because it's... They gotta get rid of all those Nintendo logos and such. But Banjo-Tooie! 2009 from Microsoft. So even this version of the game is like 15 years, uh, 15 years old now. Which is crazy to think. But I love how direct of a sequel it is. It's really, really fun. It takes place like two years after the OG game. I think there's gonna be a cutscene that explains all that, so let's not dwell too much and here's your file select screen here i think when you play it normally it doesn't show their pictures until there's actually like a save file on there so that's interesting if they change that we got the leaderboards again we got the achievements this time everybody what are we up against hey nako klungo okay, well okay <laughs> there may be like minor spoilers in the achievements so if you don't want to uh have anything spoiled whatsoever if you've actually never seen banjo tui before look away for just a couple of minutes here i won't uh won't say anything that might might alarm you. Uh, treasure hunt. Wait, you'll probably end up with many more, but to achieve this, you'll need just one of each. One of each what? Treasure hunt. Treasure. Like doubloons? Kill any 20 bad guys with any of these attacks. Interesting. Muriel soul, you'll find. Okay, okay. So that's one for beating a boss. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Um, 
No one be, you have to freeze every single... Let's see here. Miracles... Oh, wow. So do they stay frozen after, they, after they've been frozen? If that's what I'm thinking it is. Interesting. You see, manage to be HD notification. You don't ask questions. You just click on it. <laughs> even if there's typos. Even if the, it's the wrong thumbnail. I'm just happy that the... That the, that the title changed, so people didn't still think it was Minecraft. Oh, you think Block... Oh, is it gonna get off sync? Is that a thing in the remake, Block Frog? Welcome, welcome. Okay. Okay. Do it properly this time. Okay. For being the boss of the game, it sounds like. Spoilers that this does have a boss of the game. Okay. Which one? What's that one? Shoot him up. Oh, those are like different. Okay, okay. So a lot of uh, achievements related to like mini games, and and such, which which is cool. Banjo Tooie has a lot of mini games. It actually had a really cool multiplayer mode where you could play through the mini games and earn points and compete with friends. I still see a Nintendo 64 sitting there on the table, which is kind of interesting. And I also see Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts on the table, which is rather concerning, but there's no Xbox 360 to play them in, which is kind of crazy, too. This feature is not yet available. How could it not yet be available? The game's been out for, for 15 years. Multiplayer, press A to... Oh, okay, so you can still do the multiplayer mode. Is it even online multiplayer? That's kind of... That'd be kind of cool if it was, although it looks like maybe it's not... Trying to, trying to get out of here. Um, we got... What's this? Copy game? And, of course, the trash bin for deleting games. So, this has been an extreme, extremely exciting tour through the menus. <laughs> hope you've all enjoyed that. Christian, hope you didn't miss much. No, as you can see, we haven't even actually started yet. We did look through the achievements, so... If, uh, if that was something you were really excited for, I apologize that you might have missed that. What the heck even is that? A ham radio or something, right? I always thought it kind of looked like an, an NES ish but no it's supposed to be more like a vcr it looks like big phil <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly but okay everyone that's right they programmed the music to fit the lag from n64 cutscene but here with everything running smoothly it gets off sync so according to block frog the opening cutscene is going to be hilarious let's go Two years have passed since when Tilda the Witch was defeated by Banjo and Kazooie. Sorry for anyone who didn't play the original, you have just been spoiled. Xbox in my N64 game. Falling from her tower, she was buried underground, where she remains until this very day. Oh, right back where we left off, it seems. Except with a two year time skip. Deep Banjo Lord is Big Phil, yes. Illegal gambling in my Nintendo 64 game? Well, I guess it's an Xbox 360 game now, so it's not as big of a deal. <laughs> R.I.P. Daniel. So they're like, you know, best friends with Mumbo now. But still, you got good old Spiral Mountain there. I mean, I love sequels that, like, directly reference the games that come before. Especially if they let you explore areas from the previous one, characters come back. I'm a sucker for that sort of thing. I remember this big pile of rubble there, though. Boomer Bear! Yeah, so I'm really excited to be playing this as well. Thanks for stopping by. 
There's that awful freaking picture in the background that ruined that run of the first game. You had to replay the whole freaking original almost to, to get all of the notes. Or else our gamer score would have forever been ruined. Well, sure was a jerk for making me restart the game last time. Sure hope it doesn't bite him in the butt, says Raynock. Right? That would be just terrible. You love the HD version, have, uh, have them on Rare Replay, right? I really enjoyed the HD versions as well. When you're not having, yeah, you know, game-breaking glitches. <laughs> You'd get rid of that picture if you were a banjo. Just throw that thing out. It even has trash cans beside his house, right? But what is this? <gasps> Blah belt. Ugh. So we get new characters. Who would have thought? Star Wars ship, it looks like. <laughs> like the fish in the background is like really lit up compared to everything else. Kazooie's head just sticking out of the backpack is fun. Uh, that was the first one, uh, Ma KCC. So far the music and everything is still really well synced, I think. So Grintilda has sisters, more than just uh, Brentilda from the first game, who in our winning run we never actually talked to, ever. And there you go. Well, she's back in bone form. <laughs> and with one less eyeball, apparently. See, so, yeah, I really, I, I, I really like the story to this game. I love how it just really picks off, picks up off where um, you kind know, of conclude, uh, you conclude the first one. Even if there's a bit of a time jump, but... But of all the directions they could have taken it, I think they picked a pretty good one. Yes, <laughs> exactly. They really put a lot of effort into the opening cutscene. Uh-huh. 
Hello, Jackson! Welcome, Hunky Monkey! Just in time for the main event here. The part we've all been waiting for. Manjo can just like see through the curtains. Everyone under the table! I'll protect you. It's a great game, Block Frog. It's been a while since I've beat it though. So I'm really looking forward to a replay. <laughs> Jackson, that's really kind to you. Hope you enjoyed the playthrough. I have no idea how much we're gonna be doing tonight. I have not in any way like segmented this game, decided how much we're gonna do when. We're just gonna kind of play it at our own pace. And there it goes. Except for Klungo, no one likes that guy. Also, it doesn't lag in this one. Again, it's been so long since I've seen this opening cutscene. I wouldn't I haven't even thought about that. But look at that, the, that sun effect. That glare. The house destroyed. This is the Xbox 360 version. It came out in 2009, so it's already 15 years old. Bottles! Oh man, I sure hope nothing happened to him. This was bad. <laughs> wow, killed in a Nintendo game on the Xbox. He wasn't the favorite character in Banjo Kazooie anyway. Now, especially after what he did to our file. This is what you get when you mess up game saves, says Reyna. Exactly. Want to see if you can beat me to the end of the game? We'll be, pl uh, we'll be playing every Thursday night. Let's see what we can do about bottles here. And there you go. After all that, we finally have to start here. There, I was really afraid for a second it was going to be like dark that whole time. Okay, got to get back into the controls. Can we talk to you? So you my old dirt piles, press B to interact with them to remind you of your oral original moves. So what I always say about uh, Banjo-Tooie is I love how we start the game with all of the moves that we learned in the last one. Except uh, they ran out of eggs at some point. I don't know what they did with them. Eat them? Chuck them at stuff? You get to come back into the house? I don't um, think there's ever anything to actually do in here. Looking at... Oh, they changed something for Banjo-Tooie. Normally when you zoom in to look around in the original game, I'm sure that you move the camera with the with the right stick, but now it's been changed to the left stick, so that's... <laughs> you know, it's funny, even just between the two games on Xbox, they're changing things, but... Yeah, I don't think there's ever actually any reason to come in here. But uh, yeah, you can see what Banjo's house now looks like, as it's been destroyed. Maybe we jump through here to unlock Stop and Swap! No, okay, so... Back outside... May want to fix the spelling error in the title, says David Ray. Uh, I absolutely once... <laughs> Look at my best clothes, they're all burnt! Wait, so that wasn't just like what he wore every day? It's me, Royston! So, it was showing that fish in the background, and I guess, you know, he got blown out of the house, and now he's under this massive boulder, somehow survived. But if we can never get him out of this boulder, maybe something good will happen. And again, we can also talk to these, uh, the molehills. For reviews of what we learned in the last game, but I don't think we need to worry too much about that. We are headed over to this new hole in the wall, though. Once we're done exploring Spiral Mountain a little bit. Again, I love when you can explore places from the original game still. 
Except a uh, much more solemn mood in this game compared to the last one. What do I rate Banjo Kazooie and Banjo Tooie? They're both like A plus games, absolutely. They're both uh, a bit different. Banjo Tooie is much bigger in scale, and you know we can debate all day long if that's a better thing or like a good thing or a bad thing or anything. But I just think they're both great games, and we're going to have a lot of fun with this one as well. We get these new enemies around. So I like that when you roll in this game, you know, Kazooie surrounds you now. It's a little bit stronger than the roll in the original game. Plus, just pressing B without moving. Well, I like how uh, we haven't even met that guy yet, and he's already talking. So in the original game, just pressing the attack button, which I guess is actually X in this game, is normally like a really weak punch, but in this game, you do like a peck forward, and it's much more powerful than the punching was in the original game, which is good. In regards to the title and stuff, though, I can't do anything about that right now, and also, if people think it's funny and click the video, then <laughs> or you'll comment about it, then hey, maybe the algorithm will like that. Hopefully, I'll be able to fix that all after we're done here. So in the original game, you go around Spiral Mountain and when you do a whole bunch of stuff, you collect empty honeycombs. Uh, I don't think there's really much to collect down here in this one. Hey, we can go into the hole where Grunty was for two whole years. Pretty exciting. And we can also climb back up here. So let's go see what looks, uh, what Grunty's lair looks like. Before going into that newfangled hole, so pick up some red feathers. So another thing I mentioned about this game is that everything is in nests now. You can see that just from picking up three nests, we got 20 eggs and 20 red feathers each. Like that's crazy compared to in the last game where everything is kind of set around individually. <laughs> it takes like four years to, to pick them all up. But I kind of liked how it made the world feel more populated and like there was, you know, stuff around where the, the, the nests kind of get, uh, you know, they condense everything a lot. And yet, you have these massive levels where sometimes it feels like there's not really much. How long have we been playing? Oh, we just started. Um, about 20 minutes ago, so you haven't really missed much. There ain't no way a fish can survive under a boulder on land. Game gets the deducted 10 points for not having realistic physics. I know, right, Raynock? That's that's what I'm talking about here. Uh, let's, oh, uh, let's see. Oh, in all? Like, you want to go view totals already? Did the opening cutscene count as, like, game time? Oh, yeah, those are, like, two different uh, things in this game. Okay, so yeah, the, the opening cutscene did not count as part of game time. Well, so we got leaderboards, you can check the achievements from there. So we can fly here. Again, something we learn, you know, in the second level of the first game, but we start the second game off, which is really cool. And do we even have the good old Beak Buster? We should. Or whatever this one was called. Well, I'm trying to fit through the, <laughs> through the hole there. We can just grab that and do it that way. I don't even think we actually had to climb to the top of that mountain. We probably could have reached it from the bottom. But hey, in here, we got this guy who you remember, may remember from BK1. Burger King 1. It's Cheeto, the magical spell book. But he's all out of pages this time, so you gotta go find them and bring him back. And then he tells you the cheats, which again, aren't really cheats, but they're more upgrades that you can then use um, to get more feathers and eggs and all that sort of stuff. You said the collectibles are clustered, so Banjo is better. Again, I like, um, you know, like the notes being individual. Like, the fact that you now have these much bigger levels, and yet the notes are all condensed into these nests. Like, it, it's a, it was a really questionable decision that bothered me a lot as a kid. And we'll see during this playthrough if it still bothers me just as much. The thumbnail is a fail. <laughs> Again, YouTube is having technical difficulties tonight. It would not let me edit um, things properly. So tomorrow, or not tomorrow, after the stream, I'll hopefully be able to go in and do it. But just from like the, the live stream dashboard, uh, it was not having it today for some reason. But hopefully people are intrigued and click anyway. You know, hopefully everyone wants to watch some of the, you know, Minecraft Let's Play or something. But yeah, this is really neat how you get to explore kind of the entrance to Grunty's Lair here again. Um, and you can get like the Grunty's Lair music if we stand far enough away from Cheeto. But you can never actually go through like any of the doors again, which is unfortunate. As a kid, I always thought, oh, it'd be cool if you could like explore the whole layer in Banjo Tooie as well. And did, did these eggs respawn? Wow, so you can get like as many eggs as you want if you come in here. But all right, so we're looking for Cheeto pages. I think five gives you a cheat. Also, it's auto saving, which is pretty interesting. What else can we do around Spiral Mountain? There's a few things you can normally do here, like go over here, and this is for a Cheeto page. Although you can also just kind of do this pad as well. They look a little bit different than in the original. It's much more clearly a foot in this game. Whereas a kid, I didn't know what they were. 
<laughs> um, Cheeto the Cheats, have I 100% in both games? Yes, absolutely. Although I have 100% in the first game many times. The second game, I've 100 percent like once. So here's my rule in regards to, to cheats and helping me out and stuff. So I have no pre-planned route through this game at all. It's not like some YouTubers or whatever where it's like, all right, you know, before I do a playthrough or a let's play, I'm going to play through it myself five times and make a big list of notes for what we're going to do in part one and part two or whatever. Uh-uh. We are just playing the game and whatever happens, happens. Uh, so again, if I like run past something, it doesn't mean that I've forgotten about it or that I'm not going to get it. Maybe it's just, uh, you know, I'm kind of going out of order, going all over the place. So don't scream things too early, but... I've beat this game before, so if you want to point out that I'm missing something pretty obvious, uh, don't be afraid to do that either. But just know that like, if I don't get something immediately, it doesn't mean that I've forgotten about it or that I don't know it's there. I just do things like really poorly ordered sometimes. So that's right, there's this guy in here. But we can't get him yet. Yeah, we gotta, gotta come back later to do that one right. So we'll come back out of here for now. So that's game pack is usually related to stop and swap so how that's gonna work in the 360 version I'm not quite sure that will be very interesting to see but yeah I like that you can explore spiral mountain now you can fly around a little bit so uh, the, the L and R buttons in the original game were used to kind of control the, the camera it's like it would center it behind you but it's also used to change your eggs in this game so that's gonna be a little weird at first but I think there is one thing we can do. Also, flying feels a little different in this game. Like, is that a thing in Banjo-Tooie? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Let's die instantly. That will be really fun. But, um, but yeah, so that's kind of weird. All right, so let's go back. I need, I needed flying to do one more thing on the overworld map here. I think we're then ready to actually proceed with the game. But so you can also, I think, jump up to this. So you don't have to go all the way up Spiral Mountain. And then there's a flying pad up here that you can use. So backseating is okay, says Daniel. Yeah, so like if I'm... Again, I don't know this game as well as the original Banjo-Kazooie. I know it fairly well. Uh, it still really horrified me in the original game when we couldn't find those notes in Mad Monster Mansion. Like, I was I was just like, oh my gosh, how, how has it come to this? Oh, you can't break that with that. Okay, so it looks like we're not doing that quite yet. I think, okay, that we've done everything we can do on Spiral Mountain then, is if we look at the totals one more time. And this time, like, everything should actually be listed in the totals, unlike the last game where Mumbo tokens were not for some reason. Yeah, one of the one Cheeto pages. I think that's pretty much everything it's gonna list here. So let's proceed on with the game. Normally in the original game, there is a one-up behind this waterfall. Is there actually still like a hole back here you can go? And that's funny that they leave the hole. But there's no one up in it anymore because there's no extra lives in Banjo-Tooie. You never get game over in this game. There's a weird thing down there with Kazooie's face on it though. That we cannot do quite yet. And with that, into the cave. You dare to go on top of Grunty's lair, says Jackson. So, uh, I don't think it lets you fly that high. Is that guy coming after me? Oh, he is too. <laughs> Yeah, it won't let you go that high, unfortunately. But yeah, it doesn't look so massive uh, here compared to when you're playing through it in the first game. But okay, into the hole. You're like, why, says Daniel. Oh man, right? Well, the controller is rumbling as uh, Klungo is smashing around down here. Did the original Banjo-Kazooie and Tui have any rumble pack compatibility on the 64? Or is that like all added in for the Xbox versions, I wonder? And chat is not on the stream, says Christian. Yeah, I need to I need to sort that out now that I'm doing the restream thing. Uh, I need to figure out how to do that again. Hopefully it's still okay for everyone though. You get to see the full screen in beautiful HD. So do you know what you get for stop and swap in the Xbox versions here? I think we're going to unlock some uh Actually, we'll, we'll find out when we do it. I, d I don't know all of them. I think I've heard like one of them is like an avatar or something. <laughs> very, very Xbox-esque reward, but I don't know them all. So let's just wait until we unlock them and find out. Can I speed run Banjo-Kazooie? So, uh, so yeah, that's definitely going to be the thing about these playthroughs. They're not speed runs. 
This isn't like the, you know, the guide to follow if you're playing the game yourself. There's probably going to be some hilarious shenanigans at some point. I'm probably going to forget some things. Uh, and if I'm really stuck again, feel free to, to laugh at me and point out what I've, uh, what I've done wrong. Well, let's hope, though, that we don't have moments like that. Let's not be pessimistic. But yeah, so Klungo here, we gotta fight him. And then after every hit, he starts throwing magic potions at you. He has, like, an unlimited supply of those in his coat, apparently. And three hits, and he's dead. The original did have rumble, says Christian. Interesting. All right, we already got 20, 20 gamers going just for kicking his butt. Boss battle now, says Daniel, right? Like, the, what kind of game starts off with a boss battle like that? Wasn't anything serious, though. We've not seen last of Klungo, so he runs down there. Remember, it's the green way we're going, not back out the, the brown side. So, this is a, a really interesting room. You never revisit this room again. Once we leave this room, it will never appear in between the transition of going through that cave and then where it's going to, to lead us to here. So enjoy it while it lasts. There's like 30 items that you can miss in here and never get again. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, here you go. Appreciating the, the one time only room. Where Why did, why did the, the machine like drive over here and then drove back over there? Or maybe, oh maybe. How do I get out of this? Like they drove through this wall too at some point? Is that like what they're trying to imply? I'm trying to... Camera's weird. Yeah, maybe maybe that's what happened. But okay, actually no, no, we're going the green way. I even just said this. In the N64 game, the Klungo var Blast variant would change depending on what file you choose. For example, if you choose file one, you fight the giant Klungo first, but three. That's really neat. And they did that uh, with like Brentilda in the original game as well, right? How the different files have different uh, things for Grunty. Like that's just such a nice touch. Hello, Azul. Welcome. You just showed up in time as we're entering the Isle of Hags, Jinjo Village. And this is going to be our kind of hub world for Banjo-Tooie. Again, this guy who we have not yet met somehow, you know, subliminally uh, telling us stuff into our brains. What's it called? Uh, telepathically. That's the word I'm looking for. So, at some point, we will see this overworld map from above. I've never understood, like, just exactly where this is supposed to be. Like, is, is, is Spiral Mountain right on, like, the other side of that wall? Or did they dig, like, hundreds of miles underground and we just walked all the way to this island? So it's, it's a little confusing. But okay, let's, uh... So we got all these different houses here that belong to Jinjos, except the gray one. We got signs all over the place in this game, so hope you've, uh, you know, polished up on your English. There's gonna be lots of reading. So what you're saying is that you need to wrong warp to every turn to this room, Miles Luigi. That's, that's a fair point. That's uh, pretty much the only way you can do it now. That's my favorite Klungo fight. <laughs> They're all, uh, Klungo-tastic. That is just sad. But okay, so, okay, which house was it that had the thing on top? I feel like the camera's not the same as the OG one, a little bit. Okay, so we want to go on top of the red house. So even the hub world in this game has notes. But as you can see, even the notes are in nests. Let's get up here. So to get up here, you do this, you go in here, and you do something like this. Like, I think this is what I normally do. I don't think there's any way to fly in this room. You could also, like, much later, shoot something on that roof to get it. But I think, I could swear this was how I always did it. I thought you could, like, come in here. Something like that. This is gonna be the next hour of the stream, everyone. Hope you're enjoying it. Like, oh, I know we can do this. I know we can do this. I don't think there's any window that's, like, closer to the top. <laughs> I'm sure this was how I always got these notes. Maybe they changed it in this version. No, that's not true. Couple more tries, and I promise we will actually play the game. Like, it's not actually important that we get this thing right now. We can very easily just, like, leave it for later. And I'm sure I used to just be able to jump into the window and get up there. Is there, like, anything behind that helps at all? I don't think so. I 
like, no, the back is no help whatsoever. I think you need the, the grip to- oh, that would make sense. That would make sense. Okay, we will come back after we get that. Yeah, that's, that's a, a very essential thing that we're going to learn about in this game at some point. So yeah, these will teleport us around the Isle of Hags, except we don't have any other connections yet. We can also go inside the Jinjo houses. They're all gone! So, in this game, the way that Jinjos work is instead of there being five per level, the Jinjos are spread all throughout all the levels, and when you collect all the same of one color, then you get a, a Jiggy from them. And you can see there's like all sorts of different colors in this game, which is pretty cool. But right now it's very sad because there's no one here. All right, we got 100 messages today. And why is Bunny? It looks like you were like the 100th one. Welcome watching over there on Twitch. Chat is still gone, says Why is Bunny. Yeah, that's just for um the, the HD widescreen games right now. Um, because it doesn't look good in front of the game uh, when doing it through Restream. And I'm trying to figure out how to make it look better. I could do it. Like, it wouldn't have a, a black background or anything. So it probably wouldn't even be very easy to read. People would like, you know, if, if people think that's better than nothing, I could try that for the next time. Alright, let's get a couple more golden feathers here. But as you can see, all the different Jinjo houses, so we're going to be collecting all these guys at some point. But where we're really going is inside this building. Right here. The little King Jinjo. But before that, can we even go here yet? We got Bottle's house. So, you know, he lives in those mole hills. But he also kind of lives here. Um, should we do the King Ginger? I forget if there's like a better order to do this. I think we have to go down there anyway after. So we'll go in here first. Proceed the plot a little bit. That's why we're playing the game, right? I liked it better this way, honestly. One more jiggy for the actual worlds. Azul following on Twitch. Thank you. Hope you're having a great day. Great night. But here, what's up? It's King Jingling. <laughs> seems a bit empty. See, all the Jinjos used to live here. The Grey Ones got mush, but the rest of them ran away somewhere. And then back for the kickball tournament next week. You love a Banjo 3E. I mean, yeah, I, I, absolutely. We are playing Nuts and Bolts after this, so stay tuned. King Jingling came back from California. You can tell from his speech, says Azul. So we're just handed like a free Jiggy in this case. Uh, I mean, you're handed a free one technically at the beginning of the first game too. You'll fill in the first puzzle. We gotta go see Master Jiggy Wiggy now in his temple. Ancient Order, Crystal Jiggy. <laughs> a lot of things in this game. It's really weird compared to the first one. Ling jingling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's true, you know, since the... Essentially what happens is there's no witch switches in this game. The Jinjo Jiggies are considered Iolo Hags Jiggies. So then that, does, that still leaves, you know, ten other Jiggies for you to find in the levels themselves. Where in the, in the first game, it's like, you know, the Jinjos kind of took up one of those. Which, fair enough. But yeah, a lot of big interior areas in Banjo-Tooie. Just everything in Banjo-Tooie is just like five times the size of the original game. It's huge. That strange pet thingy was cool. Let's go find that Jimmy Wiggy then. Yep, Grunty's Revenge comes to the Nintendo Switch Online. That'd be awesome. But meanwhile... We got something nefarious going on here. This is definitely a location that we will never see later in the game, ever. Again, lots of cutscenes and such in this game, which is great. I 
The Big Ol' Blaster! I thought she was rhyming better than that earlier. Rhymes aren't working so much now. Just start firing at everything. The advantage is to be much darker than the first one, but honestly, it works. Nothing beats a banjo to be last year at 10 p.m. Yeah, I hope everyone's having a good night. Uh, again, it's been a lot of story and cutscenes so far. Just meeting characters. And we still got a little bit of that to go. We're almost at the first level. Almost. And again, I have no idea how much we're going to get done per stream. Like, I have no roadmap for this at all. It's just going to kind of happen as it happens. People have been asking for this for years. So, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys it. Darker in tone like DKC2 says Block Frog. You think it's funny that Grunty gave up on rhyming? I mean, when you're missing half your body, I guess rhyming becomes a, a little less of a priority. But, oh, I'm loving this. This is great. Like, there was really only two living beings inside this whole palace. Like, a lot of what looks like it was sucked out here was, like, the color in the walls. Like, there was only, like, two dudes in here. And the poor other guy just, like, a paste now. Sister told us stop rhyming since Christian. <laughs> Well, that's no fun. It, it's definitely just a cop out for like the writers were so sick of coming up with everything being a rhyme. Jackson, I mean, once we play them all, I'll be able to. I think I'll be in a position to, to give a better opinion on that. I've always said Banjo Kazooie One is my favorite, but you know, it's been a long time since I played through Banjo Two in its entirety, and I've never even beat Banjo Nuts and Bolts, so. I'm prepared to be impressed. <laughs> well, I, I'm going in with an open mind in all these games. <laughs> well, all right. Have a good laugh about that. So, like, we literally just stood there the whole time while well, this place got zapped. And you can go back in now, but it's much sadder than it was before. This is a great camera angle. Now to save us going into the zombified throne room. Can we jump up on this? It's weird that you can't even sit on the chair. Oh yeah, he's a right. So you, I, I, you can't defeat him. I don't think. I'm actually gonna stop doing it in case like you can permanently kill him somehow. Touching him will cause damage to you, but otherwise, yeah, that's uh, that's all we're doing in there. Hot, you wish Hot Grunty was canon. Just, just, just get game over in Banjo Kazooie, then like never play it again. But all right, so from that, now it's time to visit good old Bottle's house. Cause yeah, like he, you know, he lives underground. Like, you don't really think about him having a house, but this game, make sure you know, there's that freaking picture of him that was above Banjo's uh, mantle there. Pretty good, Mrs. Bottles. Yes, yeah, so we get introduced to like all of uh, Bottle's family. <laughs> I guess they, they just don't tell her about what happened to Bottles. It's just like, you know, may, maybe someday we'll tell you, but not today. You can't. Okay, that's good to hear. How about you abandoned to be at a Blockbuster sticker on it? Pulled off message, cover up the cart. Yeah, those Blockbuster stickers were annoying. Wait, there's even like a bad guy in this guy's house too. Interesting. So the honeycombs bounce around in this game, and another thing to note is that enemies 
drop honeycombs, just like they did in the original game. If you don't pick up the honeycomb in the in the Banjo Kazooie one, it will stay there forever. You can go pick it up whenever you want it. In this game, the honeycomb will eventually disappear, and enemies respawn in this game, unlike in Banjo Kazooie one, where they're just gone forever. Which is nice after being defeated, unless you leave a level and come back. There you go, playing with the, the good old Diddy Kong toy. We have the prototype glasses he's working on. Did he finish working on them by any chance? They're called the Amazo Gaze glasses. I'm gonna actually have to read this because the controls might be different in this game. Use the right stick up. Oh, so that's why they changed the way that the um the viewing looks in this game. So yeah, now that we've talked to that dude, we can look around and we can use the the, the camera stick. To zoom in and out, which is pretty cool. So, like over here, we got the uh, Golden Eye, my favorite rareware game. It's pretty great. But yeah, there you go. And one more room to go through, and we're almost to the actual game. <laughs> we're almost done talking to people. Um, yeah, I've I've, I've played Mario Ka Mario 64 before. Kickball tournament, yeah. I don't know, just no one noticed that his like whole house got zapped. Should find the fridge, <laughs> says Daniel. Raid the raid the fridge of Bottles' house. I want to see Bottles play kickball. I'm sure he was or is. Oh my gosh, Block Frog! I know that, and it upsets me so much because it probably would have been an amazing level. I hate, uh, you know, when things get cut from games. Like Banjo Tooie is already so long that you would never know the final level got cut. But oh, it, it hurts because I just always imagine what could have been. And it's a case much like um, how Rusty Bucket Bay has, um, you know, like an underwater version of the theme. Of the, of the engine room thing that never gets used. Well, there's a whole bunch of unused music that never gets used for the last level because you know, a lot of the parts of it got cut. But we won't talk about that quite yet. We'll talk about that when we get there. And for the time being, here we go. We're almost to actual, like, levels in gameplay. Which is going to be pretty great. Alright, so we can go do that. So yeah, we're in another part of Isle O'Hags now. So here's another one of those bunker things we can go into, the silos. So we can now teleport around to any to any other one that we found. So in the original game, you have those cauldrons that you activate, and they're just like a you know direct one-to-one -one connection. Where in this game, anytime we find one of those silos, we can go to any other one that we've activated. And here we have he was a lot further away than I thought <laughs> because he was really big. Uh, so here's a Jinjo in this game. Again, depending on the color, there's different amounts that you have to find of them. And once you've found every single Jinjo of the same color, they give you a Jiggy. Now, the first time I ever played this as a kid on the N64, this was a white Jinjo, and there was only one white one in the whole game. So you had a Jiggy for that. There are nine black ones. <laughs> So, this doesn't help us much at the moment. But, um, you know, eight more of them and we get a Jiggy. So yeah, the black ones end up being very common. <laughs> Jackson. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So it, you know, it shows us we've got one out of nine. But it's fun looking for the gingers. I like the way that they hid them in this game. Again, there's lots of collectibles in this game spread out all over the place. Give you the family heirloom. Heck yeah. See, 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 the enemies respawn in this game. It's such a pain. And I don't think they give you health the second time. Oh, well, they still do? Alright, well, good to know. So we're supposed to go to that temple to the left. But before we do that, there's one more place we gotta check out. If I can remember exactly where it is. Yeah, like this, it, you can barely even tell for the longest time as a kid. I never even realized this was a pathway. It just looks like uh, part of the background. But we can go down here and find this secret area. Actually, wait a minute. No, this isn't where I was looking for. Whoops, I'm a liar. This door 
leads you to here, which is the room we were just in. But we could not get up from this angle because this ledge was too tall. But, uh, okay, that's not what we were actually looking for. Are honeycombs 2D sprites you can't tell? So, no, they are 3D, as they were in the first game, but they look much different in this game. Uh, they were very shiny and, and nice looking in the original. They're much duller in this game, plus they bounce around for some reason. This is what we were looking for. We come down to this egg here. And this is what we've all been waiting for, everyone. Heggy's Egg Shed. So it's Heggy the Hen. Yeah, I'm sure, I assume something egg related happens in here. So find special egg, then Heggy hatch. So this is where all the stop and swap magic happens, everybody. And uh, wasn't there one that already had like an egg in it by default sort of thing? Is it up here? Maybe that's not a thing in this version of the game, which would be kind of funny. Again, this guy who we have not met yet still te telepathically spe uh, speaking to us. But okay, so we gotta come back here later. I s you started your YouTube channel when you were first born, Jackson. Well, I appreciate you checking it out. Hope you're having a nice night. Again, we can read signs and learn important information. Suitable eggs may be found closer to home than you think. Amazing. So, with that, I think we're finally ready to do what the game wants us to do. And that is go up these stairs. So yeah, as mentioned, we're going to learn a move in the first level that will allow us to access like so many more areas. That's the lowly disciple of Jiggy Wiggy. So yeah, suddenly it's like the other puzzle pieces are, are alive and like living beings. Which everything in Banjo-Kazooie has like eyes and talks, but it's weird. So, Jigsaw Piece is also known as Jiggy, so it sounds familiar. So, this is how this game works. In the original Banjo-Kazooie, there are the puzzles hidden around Gruntilda's lair that you fill in with the puzzle pieces. Where the difference is, in this game, you instead bring all of your Jiggies here, and once you have enough, you have to do a certain mini-game that, once completed, will open up the next level. And we are going to get extreme PTSD... <laughs> The second we see exactly what that mini game is. I don't think there's anything behind this place or to the sides, but we're gonna double check anyway. Looks like just kind of refillable items and such. That one was feathers. Is this one gonna be like eggs on this side? How did I know? But okay. Some monkey icons from afar look like Vivian from Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. Monkey icon looked like Vivian? I need to see that. Where was that? You have entered the sacred temple. Jigwiggy. I'm definitely excited for the for the TTYD remake, for sure. So alright, so we got to do that. Uh, these signs all around don't say anything yet, I believe. Yes, so we can unlock those later. But for the meantime, we take our one Jiggy over to this puzzle board. And if... <laughs> hope you're all ready for what's coming up. It's puzzle time! Just like this again. I hope there's no glitching that happens here. Hopefully they actually fix this. So yeah, just like with the bottles bonus puzzles from the first game, which, again, most people probably never even knew existed. They just lifted that minigame out, placed it into Banjo-Tooie, and you are now required to play it to open new levels. Okay, okay, we understand. So what did it say X does? Okay, puts it down. Can we flip pieces yet? No. Not that you need to. The first one's kinda easy. You get the whole hundred seconds to... To put this thing together? I don't know. It looks like it could honestly be either of these ones. Oh, no, maybe. Mm, I don't know, maybe. Mm, maybe, maybe this one. Uh, I don't know. I, I think we should just give up. Who wants to play a different game? <laughs> I 
All right. Post traumatic. Save the sword, says Raynock. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I know Jackson or Christian. That's very much. Uh, that's very much how that's working right now. I wonder if they took elite wizards out of Pit 100 Trials, hopefully. You think they would actually change, like, the enemy lineups down there? Oh, you're talking about the... Oh, interesting. Monkey icons in the chat. So, yeah, anytime we open up a new level, a beam shoots out from the ceiling here. And it doesn't really work because this door is so close to the, to the temple anyway. But yeah, that's what that uh, you know little podium over there means, is that we can unlock this door with the, with the temple. As we have just done. And the door to level 1 opens. One thing I don't like about this game is I wish it would still put the sign above the door, like Banjo-Kazooie did. Like if it said, you know, the, the level name up there would be really neat. I like when Banjo-Kazooie 1 did that. What if we need, like, 4 for the next level? Wow, that's going to be tough. And notice in this game, it doesn't consume your jiggies as you use them. Is it now like we actually only need three more to get to that four, where in the original game, it's like, you know, you're putting the pieces into the puzzle. They're gone once you've kind of used them up. But all right, are we actually ready for level one, everybody? Are we ready? Here we go. It's Mayhem Temple. So warp pad, find another one in this world. So yeah, worlds are so big in Banjo-Tooie that they have warp pads within them as well to warp you around to different locations. Is there four or five? Because I know like the list can have four, which would imply that you know there's actually five of them. But yeah, an empty honeycomb, and then directly behind the start. But even though like we're just barely too big for it, we can't fit in there quite yet. So let's come back and get that. Wow, I haven't played this game. Oh, I know I keep saying it. I, it's amazing to be playing this game again. And here, all right, everyone, are you ready for how easy it is to get all the notes in the first level? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Oh, we can't even just let us get notes. I don't care about your stupid moves. I got notes to collect. 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, warp pad. Seventy, seventy-five, eighty, and for the last twenty, just because the notes were not condensed enough, they stick like a twenty note together. The treble clef, <laughs> which is just absolutely insane. Like the the way that they've you know smushed all the notes together. Oh, wait, I thought this was the was the treble clef up here. Well, I forget where that is then. But the point is, we have almost all of the notes. <laughs> First puzzle piece gotten. Oh, there it is down there. Okay. See, I knew it was around here somewhere. So this is worth 20. There. That's how easy it is to collect all the notes in Banjo 2. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. It's freaking ridiculous. Just how, um, you know, the, the levels are massive, and yet they freaking condense all of the notes down. It makes no sense. Okay, let's play uh, the level like we're actually supposed to now. Climb this up the, the normal way. So we got mumbo pads in this game. That's kind of funky. <laughs> it's crazy how much content some of these old cartridges have. Like, yeah, this is a huge game. So where was that actual move we're supposed to learn? I don't even remember what the first move in this level is. So this is what, um, this is a, a jam jars pod here. And these replace the mole hills from the first game that Bottles had, which taught us moves. Oh, it's B that you used. Weird. Man, the note click thing is so lame in this game, says Raynock. Level designs. Designers. Sun literally did that layout. Again, I don't get why the levels are way bigger, and yet they made the notes, like, so compact. I, I, I can't stand that. So I'm happy I'm not the only one who sees that now. My whole life I've wanted to share my frustration with that with people, and now I can finally say I've done it. 
Of course, it gets a little more complicated than later levels. They're not like a straight line like that one was. But uh, but still, it's like, why did you put them in, in nests like that? So yeah, again, they're, you know, they're pointing out that Bottle's already taught us tons of moves. It's amazing just how many new moves they invented for this game. Considering it's not like most games where you spend like the first half just recollecting the moves you learned the first time, like Metroid or something, with like a few new ones sprinkled in, but no, everything's new in this game, which is pretty cool. And the thing that notes are used for in Banjo-Tooie is for learning the moves. It's not for note doors anymore. He, only, he will only teach you the moves if you've collected enough notes. So here you go, we got enough notes. What's the first lesson? A game! There you go. See, he's the new rhyming guy in this game. <laughs> he rhymes everything. So, that's a pretty cool move he just taught us. And again, they, they, they really introduced some, new, some nice new things in this game. Now we can look around and we can shoot eggs. Why did that go away? So now we can shoot eggs just by looking at things, which is really nice. Where in the original game, you had to, like, you know, duck and... You know, try to, like... No, 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 no. Would it made sense if Banjo-Kazooie... No sense in this game. You still love it, though, says Raynock. Mm-hmm. See, normally, you just duck and you gotta do a thing like this. You will never do that in this game, ever. <laughs> now that you can look around and just shoot eggs, which is really nice. So yeah, Mumbo's house was there. Um, I want to go get that other move that people have been referring to. Since it's like right over here. See, this one requires 30 notes. I think we can handle it. Oh, this is not it. So this allows us to hold Kazooie... <laughs> like a gun formation, but it's only used in certain parts of the game, but you still have to learn it for whatever reason. Where's the move I'm thinking of then? Um, oh, actually, I think I know where it is. And I remember what moves are learned in what level. I forget exactly which pod has which move, but now it, it's, it's coming back to me. It's coming back to me. So yeah, now we can go inside this temple and do that since we've learned that move. Oh, look at that! It's an exclamation mark, uh, Honeycomb, which has no reason to be picked up right now, but we're gonna do it just for fun anyway. You've collected a skill stop, Honeycomb. Press X to stop your energy bar as close to the top as possible. And the exclamation mark one is in order. I think there's also a question mark one, which does like a random one. So you could accidentally end up with like one health, which would be really bad, but okay, that's pretty good. So the next thing I think we're gonna do Let's go inside Mumbo's house here. So, we know Mumbo's house well from the first game for being that place where you can transform into different abilities. Mumbo works differently in the second game. Where you gotta collect a Globo here. And these are kind of like the new Mumbo tokens, except you only need one of them. And, uh, they're a lot easier to find. <laughs> And here's Mumbo. He has a his house is two floors now. Starfy canonically forgets every single move he learns if you recall correctly by his buddy. I always meant to play the sequels, but I could imagine that honestly. No more Ikum Bokum, which uh you know is kind of good in the way. They were slacking at the end of Banjo Kazooie, not getting those collection flags right. Freaking despawning mumbo tokens, it's the worst. But yeah, we're gonna wanna pay him the uh, the globo that we literally just stole from like his downstairs living room. I <laughs> like how he went through the bag. So now we can play as mumbo. And I noticed there was um an achievement for like defeating 20 enemies with his uh, his zap stick. So I guess we'll get to work on that. Because again, that's that's the whole reason we're playing this, is for the achievements. Sometimes there's stuff behind his chair, I think. But yeah, so so Mumbo was featured you know, prominently on like the front of the Banjo-Kazooie box art and stuff. It's kind of crazy. I don't think we knew anything about him, but like, see this guy. This guy is just primed to be a magic stick to you. Alright, one down, 19 to go. 
Ooh, look at this guy. We got a Jinjo on the bridge, everybody. Or is it? Oh, it actually is. I thought it was the fake one. <laughs> Never mind. We got dudes up here. I don't think we can really do this yet. So we'll just kind of come back later. But yeah, the reason we need to get Mumbo's help here is just... I don't remember if he had fall damage or not, but uh, that, that question was quickly answered. We saw this Mumbo pad earlier. And these will now be littered throughout the level, and naturally, you can only use them if you are currently playing as Mumbo. So there's a lot of different... You know, people talk about Donkey Kong 64. Is that, that feels louder than like everything else. Hopefully it's not being picked up by the microphone. Let me know if I need to turn down the TV volume a little. But you know, people complain about Donkey Kong 64. And how you have to go back and change Kongs from the from the change barrel and all that, the, the tag barrel. Meanwhile, in this game, you have to play as Banjo and Kazooie Banjo and Kazooie together. You have to play as Mumbo sometimes. You have to play as the transformation in the level. You have to play as Banjo alone. And as Kazooie alone. So that's still like five different things. Just like the five Kongs from Donkey Kong 64. That you have to do sometimes. So it's not like... Uh, you know, there's not a bunch of backtracking. Now, it's not as much as... You know, Donkey Kong 64, for example. Where you find all the different colored bananas everywhere and stuff. So you gotta keep going back. But there's still a lot of like, Oh, I can't do that right now. I gotta come back with a different character. In, uh, in Banjo-Tooie. But yeah, as you can see, you know, Bumbo activated this dude, so we're going around kicking stuff now. Lots of fun. Actually, now that I think about it, I think I was supposed to go through that door. Um, but, you know, there's some other stuff to do as well. So we'll do this. And then I think Mumbo should have no trouble waking this guy up again. Is that everything? Like, I know we can keep kicking these, uh, these guys down. But I don't think there's, like, a prize for that. You can go kick this guy, <laughs> just for fun. Ugh. What happens if we walk off an edge? Have I ever done that? Ugh. Oh. <laughs> just in time to get the green guy, perfect. How does Mumbo shrink from Banjo-Kazooie? Yeah, it's so true. He's, he's not the same size <laughs> as Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, Jackson, yeah, you know, anything you like. Hope you're enjoying the stream, but hope you're having a nice night. Mumbo Kazooie, says Daniel. Okay, so now what we really should do is go inside this door with this guy. You notice that one of the doors we kicked open just had like a little hole? But no, this one you can like really go inside. And in here, there's a couple things we can do. So there's the, the last move of the level, I think. And that's the one that everyone says we need to get. Uh, as the statue, though, you can go across this quicksand, which otherwise would hurt you, to pick up our third uh, third jiggy of the level, I think. Or was that only our second one? But it's like three total. We can also come over here and do a couple things here. Like, I think we can kick this door open with this guy. There we go. We're going to want to go in there. Put this guy down. Is there anything else we can do with him? I think we've kind of hit our limit here of stuff for the for the statue guy. We can activate this warp pad with him, maybe? There we go. And up here is a tent or a teepee, which we'll be going in eventually. <laughs> we can pick up the step on the globo as well, I guess. <clears throat> Check this tent. Mumbo would probably be happy about that. I don't think Mumbo likes Wumba. Is that a thing? Or at least I think Wumba makes some comment about that, which we'll find out momentarily. All right. I think that's what we wanted that guy for. If you hit the wall where the Jinjo is with the statue, you can get it, says Blockfog. Really? Very interesting. And with that, I think we're done with Mumbo for now. Again, it's, it's a little annoying. You know, is it just like, oh, there's a Mumbo pad. Gotta go get Mumbo. And then you do, and then you do a couple things. Then you just gotta kind of take him back. What's inside this door again? Okay, I don't think there's anything really for Mumbo in here. We can defeat these guys though. We're a little bit closer to that achievement. Also, notice that Mumbo has less health than Banjo for, for some reason. 
can can Mumbo swim? I forget like what happens if he goes in the water. I don't think he can go underwater though. He can kind of just tread tread lightly. Actually, are we stuck now? Can he can he do like a backflip? Uh oh, uh oh. I hope we're not stuck. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they usually put like a ramp so Mumbo can get back out. Thank goodness. But yeah, that's uh, all part of the excitement of Banjo Kazooie here. Banjo Kazooie Tooie. But with that, we can go back to Mumbo Skull and switch back to Banjo Kazooie. That's right, yeah, Block Frog, exactly, right? And that's all for this guy. So as you can see, you know, Banjo Tooie is just so much more involved than the first game. Like, how long have we already been playing this level? You know, just opening stuff and unlocking stuff. Like, already almost 20 minutes. We had beat Spiral Mountain by the time 20 minutes came around. We have just touched the surface of this. Even though we have all the notes, uh, there's just so much else to collect in this game other than notes. And again, it's, it's a big question to me of... What do I want to do in what order? And I think what we're going to do next is go up back down to that first door we saw. And go learn that move we saw with Banjo and Kazooie. It would have really sucked if we were soft locked there, said Wise Bunny. Yes. Did I hate the turtle part with like the memorization? That wasn't so bad. We had more trouble with Mr. Vile in the, in the replay, actually. Oh, he didn't drop health that time. 35! <laughs> on the edges, you can now hold! There you go! Mario 64 style, you can hang on the ledges now. And yeah, this helps us get on top of the house. We were looking at, uh, way back at the beginning. And that's also gonna help us get this guy here. Anyway, one out of six, picking up all the different colors, which is cool. And see, they respawn so fast. That time he did drop health, though. Interesting. So, again, we can go down there and do some funky stuff. Uh, actually, maybe... Maybe we'll do a little bit more in here first. I don't want to do the transformation yet. Which is what happens inside that TP. Again, they, the levels are just so expansive in Banjo-Tooie. I'm sure there's like an optimal path. <laughs> I did not, uh, again, since it's been a while, it's not like I went up and, uh, you know, looked anything about the game, the best way to play it, the best order to do things. No, we're just going in, you know, Andrew style here and having fun with it. And we'll see what happens. Might regret that, but we'll see. So here we have a jiggy. You gotta walk and you can see that there's like, you know, a part of the floor that's different. If you step on that while you're moving too fast, this guy will wake up. But if you crawl, like, super slow... Again, the, the, it's probably easier on the Nintendo 64 stick. Because it's a lot more accurate in its detection. Where I'm having trouble with the uh, Xbox 360 stick here. Getting the, the speed that I want. Uh, I, have, I have not Ma KCC. This is pretty much where the warp pad started. Which would show up in DK64 later, yes. Except those ones were like numbered and such. They worked a little differently, but but yeah, you're you're absolutely right. But okay. So let's try that again. Like no, see like it's gotta be like as slow as you can go. This is but remember I'm playing with an Xbox 360 controller. What? Like, see, like, I didn't even adjust anything there. Now, there are things you learn later and things you can do, which will make your life easier here, if you wish. Um, but, like, we're gonna try and get this now. If I get close enough, I could probably also try and do, like, a jump. But, yeah, that's... That's interesting. Barely moved the joystick. Hello, Mario! Hope you're having a great night. Yeah, I, I mean, I am barely moving it. And, you know, as he walks, I'm not really adjusting it at all, either. <laughs> I 
<laughs> All right, and now he will just sleep forever, which is kind of sad. So we'll never get to hear from that guy again. We got like a signpost over there. I don't know if we can attack yet. Oh yeah, okay, so it's not like a separate move that you learn. So now the name of the game becomes look for ledges everywhere that you can hang on to. There are a lot of secrets hidden behind just kind of grabbing onto a ledge, such as this Cheeto page here. How do I draw? There you go. So every level has Cheeto pages to find. Another collectible to add to the pile. We need the Slogo badge. That's a great one, Jackson. Yes. A great comparison. And we also opened up this door. And hey, this looks familiar. The Code Chamber. I forget if there's a Jiggy here or if it's just for like literally entering Cheeto codes. Do you spell it the cheat code? So yeah, we know how to aim and shoot stuff. But we haven't learned any cheats yet. So <laughs> how you spell it. Like, it's funny how you know he actually stops here. It's very sensitive. And you can still do, just like in the original game, some cheats that he doesn't teach you, but we're not gonna do any of those. Yet. I don't know if there's any worth checking out later. And this is where you can look at all the cheats that you've unlocked. But okay, otherwise there's nothing it seems to do in here, so we will head out. I don't know why there's um the, the little hole for the stony guy to go into. We're getting ahead of ourselves there, though. Alright, what do we want to do next? Let's go fly around the main area. There was definitely more stuff to pick up there. So here's how these warp pads work. You can go to any of the ones that you've activated. So like the world entry and exit. Nickelodeon during a commercial break in 2000 it showed this area talking about the cheats. Really, Blockfrog, that's cool. Spell Banjo Kazooie says Daniel. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of like the like the first game, right? And so flying controls are inverted. I'm, maybe they weren't inverted in the first game. That's why uh, my, it's messing with my mind so much. Yeah, there's a few things we can definitely get from flying here. Like a Jinjo up here. Two out of six of the red one. We're getting there. And there was something on top of this bridge. And there's an empty honeycomb. So in the original game, it's two empty honeycombs per level. This game, there can be more than two because it's not six per health upgrade. Uh, it differs depending on how many health, up uh, health upgrades you've picked up. Also, I like how Jam Jars explains everything in this game where in the original game, you know, each item introduces itself, which is different. See the poor Minius feel. So, I, do I get the thing? We get something if we defeat all these guys? Which is uh, perfect, because we just learned how to, you know, shoot while we're looking around. You can only shoot one at a time, though. So, you gotta be accurate. We only got a hundred eggs, so we better better be careful. There you go. That was back when Nickelodeon was cool. Along with Cartoon Network and Disney Channel. Yeah, man. TV used to be the best as a kid. So much good stuff on there. Alright, we're working our way there. I just barely got that. Can we click all... 10 Jiggies on our first go. So here's the thing about Banjo-Tooie is, as you can see, there's lots of different moves that you learn. And in some cases, you might have to go back to a level once you've learned a move. Um, but in this level, maybe we can get them all on our first go? Do we dare go in here next? Let's do it. So here is where Banjo-Kazooie turns into Banjo-007 Goldeneye. <laughs> And you go around and you shoot stuff with a gun. That's actually a bird. 
How many do you think we'll have by the end of the stream? I have no clue. We've been playing for uh, almost an hour and a half now. We'll probably check out the next level. I don't know how much of it will do. Again, I know there's like things in, you know, again, even if it, even if we can get all the jiggies, there might still be Jinjos and different things that you can only get once you uh, learn certain things. So it's really hard for me to gauge just at what point we've kind of, you know, wrapped up. I guess just whenever, uh, whenever I'm getting sick of all the, of all the terrible voice acting. No, it's, it's all good. This I'm having a lot of fun. So now we're in here and we're looking for these totem things. And once we've collected a certain number of those, we can access some other areas in here, which will give us prizes. Don't forget about the doors on the wall. Kind of blend in, but not really. I think we can open these somehow, right? 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 Okay, it's A for some reason. And there'll be stuff hidden inside those as well. So, again, the multiplayer mode in this game is cool, because you can do, like, two-player multiplayer shootout mode in this. And, you know, there's other levels like this throughout the game as well. And it's it's pretty cool. Again, you can also do multiplayer of the various mini games that you play throughout. So if Banjo Tooie ever came to Nintendo Switch Online, uh, we would definitely have a lot of fun with it, playing the multiplayer mode and such. You've seen some of those shows. Uh, three hours, Daniel. Yeah, uh, we usually stream for like three to four hours for sure. And then the first thing I got to do after that is go fix the thumbnail in the title. <laughs> oh, YouTube! Why of all days did you uh, you know choose today to break? Uh, it is what it is, though. Again, I appreciate that all of you have found the stream. So I can dive there. And so these eggs, we can rapid fire for 58 seconds. And that's a that's a great thing to pick up when you're playing multiplayer. It's not so useful right now. In fact, you're all probably getting a headache by the by the sound effect. So I'll stop any second. Oh, I hear the ginger too. And now this is the room where once we've collected a certain number of the totems. Uh, these doors open up, so we do want to do that. That Jinju up there, there's a door that connects to him somehow. Probably up here somewhere. There you go. Not bad! Ten statues gains you entry to my slightly sacred chamber. So let's go back and enter that, because why not? And for entering the slightly sacred chamber, we get a free Jiggy. There you go. Six. So is that six total, or is that like six in this level? It might be six total, so we're actually only halfway through the level. Ka ka ka. Banjo Doom Kazooie says Daniel. Yes. All right. So yeah, that's five out of the ten. So look at the, look at those stats already. I mean, we know where one more of the empty honeycombs is. One more Jinjo. We've actually seen that Jinjo. All the moves, all the Globo. So I like that. It, uh, you know, the stat screen's much more involved in this game. Again, why they chose not to include Mumbo tokens on the stat screen in the original is such like a weird choice. Um, you know, you figured why not, but apparently they didn't like to do that, so they didn't. Like I was like respawning right within me. Beautiful. Oh, we still have a rapid fire for like another second. So yeah, uh, I think that was for 10 of these guys. I think once we get 20, the other door opens. But we're looking for the way to get that Jinjo. It might be through here. Yes, a blue one. All right, two out of seven of those guys. All right, so we're looking for the rest of those totems then. I don't think there's any other items to find in here. Just the totems. Again, unless you realize you can open these doors, it's pretty much impossible. Oops. Fortunately, there's no way to switch out of the first person mode if you don't like it. It's like you you like first person shooters or else. From Banjo's Tooie to Doom Tooie. Yeah, Banjo Kazooie, like I mentioned, you know, it has all sorts of mini games baked in, things like this. You really kind of get a, a, a taste of all genres in Banjo Tooie for sure. Can we like zoom out at all? Like, yeah, it just feels very close. Yeah, in there, I think in uh, in multiplayer, there's like a special item in there, but not in single player. Oh yeah, we can't um. I was gonna say there's like a bash attack you can do as well to save eggs, but we haven't learned that yet. Now, you gotta learn everything in this game. In fact, I was surprised that when hanging on, it let us do the uh, the beak attack without having to learn that. Now we, I don't think we've done these.
There you go. And that's all we need. So there's probably more of them. Exactly how many there are, like maybe 25 or something. But 20 is what you need to get into the really sacred chamber. And yeah, so let's go do that. Because again, I don't think there's any Cheeto pages or anything like that in here. I think we've found everything we're looking for now. And I know we could have also, you know, we could have done the door to the left there to get back. I'm just checking to see if there's anything else. Maybe there is only 20. Maybe that was like all of them. So in the really sacred chamber, we're handed another Jiggy. Early installment weirdness. Banjo Momoto totally should have been listed. Right, Boomer Bear? I, I agree. We'll have the game finished in no time. We just keep getting hit, uh, you know, handed out Jiggies like this. But not so fast. The song sounds like a doom track. The lore was that Mumbo needed Banjo and Kazooie to collect all of them to reverse Grunty's spell, transform it into a skull creature. It was in the manual, but somehow not in the game, says Boomer Bear. And yet, like, that never gets addressed ever. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's smaller in this game. Something to do with that. So yes, in Banjo Tooie, every single level. Can I can I strafe in this game? Like is, is that a thing? Okay, so it's just left and right. Okay. Um. So yeah, in Banjo Tooie, every single level has a boss, and this is the boss of this level. Where in Banjo-Kazooie, you get like the odd boss sometimes, like the giant TNT crate, but definitely not to the degree that they're in this game. Oh! Hopefully they drop health. Yeah, so we only have 5 HP right now. Where even in Banjo-Kazooie, you know, you pick up those 6 empty honeycombs right from Spiral Mountain. And so you're really kind of starting like, the game off with six health. So we're, we're, you know, we're not in the best shape right now. You could, uh, you know, come back after you've gotten a couple more hit points to do something like this, but we'll hopefully be fine. So you can also hide behind these um, tablets to avoid his dart attacks, but I think they do degrade over time. So you can't just like hide behind them forever. This isn't that tough. I think this is it. I think it's we defeat these guys now and we're done. So again, when you know what you're doing, this is not a hard boss. Like, I like how you don't even actually defeat, you, you don't fight him himself. You just destroy his body and that's it. The bosses were creative too, not too much. Oh wait, wait. Woof. <laughs> I forgot about the explosion at the end. It made a much bigger deal about it though than it uh, than it actually was. Sorry, what was Boomer Bear saying? Oh yeah, yeah, the the mumbo lore for sure. Who's my favorite boss? I mean, let's play them all, and then I'll probably be in a better position to to give a to give an opinion on that since it's been so long since I fought so many of them. But there you go. You did everything inside this temple now, so let's move on out. You think that's an instant death if it hits you? <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. Here I was goofing off, reading the chat. That's what I get for, for you know, community interaction. <laughs> I hope you're all having a great night. Thanks for watching some Banjo-Tooie, or if you look at the thumbnail, um, apparently Minecraft. <laughs> that, that's just our little secret. Okay, anyway, we're getting out of here. Where, how do you get out of here anyway? I think here. You legit think it is. <laughs> I mean, it's, it sounds pretty scary, honestly. Did I ever go in this door? I think I probably did. I think we went in this one. Yeah, okay. I will assume we went in that one. Again, I don't think there's any other items in here that really matter anyway. And just like that, we're done here. So let's just beef our eggs back up, because why not? And move on out. So what's everyone think of Banjo-Tooie so far? Again, is there anyone who, like, isn't familiar with these games? 
Uh, I'd be really curious to hear you know, if you watched Banjo Kazooie my playthrough, and now you're seeing this, and like you, you can tell there's a bit of a different vibe, right? I'm, I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts. All right, let's move to this place next again. Like, oh, it, it's just so funny. Like, all right, first we'll do this, and then we'll do this, and there's just no real rhyme or reason to what I do when. That's kind of you know, whatever I feel like. Um. So yeah, now that we can aim, you can put eggs in all these guys' mouths. Oh, there's a Cheeto page I need to fly to up there. I mean, there might be another way to get to it too. But remember that. It's all right, says Daniel. A little bit different, right? All right, inside the treasure chamber now. We got this guy. Well, I beat that guy up anyway, so he won't be bothering you anymore. So, like, this mission is where I think we're unable to complete this level as of yet. You finished watching tomorrow, Jackson? Have a great night! Thanks for stopping by! You think that Banjo Tooie comes out right when the, when Doom Clone is going on? So we can fly up there now, but there's still other stuff we can collect in here. I think. Okay, well that one's a little a little heavy. Let's have a look around. Yeah, see if we climb up there, you always got to keep your eyes peeled, like I said, for those ledges you can grab onto. Can you shoot this from here? Probably not. There's an empty honeycomb. See, if this was the uh, the first game, there'd only be two per level. He looked it up. It's not insta-kill if he hits you after he blows up. Would have been hilarious, though. No, it wouldn't have. That would have been terrible. Yeah, you always got to keep your eyes peeled in this game. Oh, no. Really? Really? So yeah, it's uh, it's always a question of just like how close do you get with those guys? It's not like uh, you know in, in the first game we had all those guys coming out of the the holes in the wall. Now this that's, this is kind of the the modern equivalent to that. Oh, what's the button again? I pressed them all. <laughs> I just mashed my palm into X, Y, A, and B at the same time. So there was no question about which one it was. But that was actually perfect. I needed that help. See that? Oh wow, another exclamation mark one. I know there's some enemies in this game that have like a higher chance of dropping those, but... And that brings us to up here. Um, I don't think there's anything like on this platform directly below us. I don't think so. We got like a gate. Even though it looks like a ground pound button. So there's a lot of buttons in this game that don't need to be ground pounded. And that's because you might be playing like a character, uh, as a character like Mumbo sometimes. Where you can't ground pound. So on the Bungus Cave, this is really fascinating. Because if we pause, it still will say... You gotta get used to these different uh, totals menus. The way they've organized it here. It still says we're in Mayhem Temple. When really... This is a joint path between another level. And you'll find that about Banjo-Tooie. Is that like all of the levels are connected to other levels in some ways. Which again just makes the whole backtrack you know, process even more kind of convoluted. Perfect timing when I said that says we're not. Ugh. All right, let's see. Uh, I think yes, yes. Okay, so we were just told about a relic we were supposed to look for. I mean, that kind of looks like a like a relic over there that might be of some importance. What was this? Is this where we came from? Yes, it might have been. And we also got up here. We can check out. So if we go way up here. Oh yeah, you can get like the evil versions of these guys, which honestly are not that big a deal. Like way nicer than uh, than the beehive ones. I'll waste a bunch of feathers on those. We got 
these pads again. So you can just tell we're like way ahead in the game compared to where we probably should be. Which again, just it's weird how the game connects sometimes. Like, look at this. You need 420 notes to to, to do this. And as we saw, we've already found all of the moves in level one. So that just tells you we are in a different level right now. And you can imply based on the, uh, the number of notes. You know, it's it's a pretty far, far ahead level. Not even like the second level. So it's just weird that it lets you come here so early, even though there's not really anything we can do here right now. So I forget though, like that statue, is you take it back to the first level. So I guess that's technically considered the first level Jiggy? Even though the statue is actually in like level five, it's, like, it's so weird. Um, hey, why can't I climb up? I guess it's just like too small of a area. What do you think of Mario's ultimate journey so far? Says Block Frog. Really? Ah, uh, I, I definitely think we're gonna we're gonna check that out on stream at some point. It's it's really cool. It's a shame that like you can't play it all in a row. Like I wonder why that happens. Oh, I thought this was like a door. But um, but it's very neat. Okay, so I think that's all we can really do in here for now. So this guy even respawns, like, that's so weird. But yeah, so it's like, kind of like a taste of what's to come. I know you can glitch this though. Like, I know people have glitched their way across this because when you touch this floor, he wakes up and kicks you out. I know people have, have done crazy shenanigans. Okay, well... Like, that was kind of close, honestly. I'm tempted to, to get the health back and try that again just for fun. Like, just for a laugh. Let's let's go beat up that, uh, that honeycomb guy. Get a few more pieces. So I, I've been getting videos recommended to me lately about, like, you know, how much backtracking do you have to do in Banjo-Tooie and stuff? And there's probably a lot of places where... Using glitches, using tricks that may or may or may not have been, uh, you know, intended by the developers. You probably can break a lot of things, and I think this is one of those cases where you can break this if you really wanted to. Or otherwise, yeah, you're supposed to do this much later. But, like, it definitely looks like with this fire, you should be able to, to glitch across there a little bit. Christian, oh, wow, yeah, they don't appear till like, that point? Thank you for reminding me. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you're trying to get like as close to the edge as you can before you jump. All right, one more try, one more try. At least he doesn't like hurt you or anything for kicking you out. And there's no like loading times between levels, so it's not that big of a deal. Can we do this one too? Maybe this one. It's pretty high up. Hmm. Yeah, this one looks like it'd be like pretty good if you could reach it. Oh, look how close that was. Look how close that was. That'd be awesome if I streamed it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely think that'd be fun. I think that um, I want to do a little more of the Mario Super Mario Brothers CD speedrun challenge. Now that we're not playing on uh, BSN uh, BSNES anymore. I was getting much better times on SNES 9X. It just must have been like a weird frame rate thing. It is annoying how... You know, depending on the emulator, it might change that a little bit. And then after we do that, I'm thinking maybe we'll try out uh, your fan game for everyone to enjoy. It's so weird. But, uh, like, you know, not your fault. It's like a weird engine and everything to go along with it. Did you see that? Did you see that? Okay. Okay. Like, I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that. Like, you're supposed to come back here and use a move that will allow you to go across that without, um, you know, waking up the guy. I've never in my life skipped that. So that's kind of incredible. I see we go all the way around and it brings us to a thing here. And where do I go? Where's the door? There's the door. Like that was cool. Um, what's up? Um, Super Tom Brother, haven't played Tui very much. How big is it? Um, hopefully I, I kept it with us, right? Like, I just walked out that door with it. Like, hopefully that counts as bringing it through the door? Yeah! Alright! 
So you're not really supposed to do that until like much later, but we did it anyway. So which, again, which Jiggy does this count as? <laughs> you waste a thing. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. So we're gonna go to the to the stats menu here. And I want to see if that adds one to Mayhem Temple or if that will just like you know count towards a level that we haven't even really played yet. This is probably gonna be a Mayhem Temple one. It is just weird though that you know normally you wouldn't unlock that until later. So six out of ten. Which pile is that on? Here we go. Yeah, no dance when Banjo gets a, a puzzle piece in this game. Uh. 7 out of 10. So yeah, that's, that's so strange. It is this world's Jiggy says Raynock. Banjo had to remind that guy that <laughs> this, this, is, this is a family game. Okay, so now we can also fly in the door that opened at the top of there, so let's do that. Also, is there anything that you get for climbing down this wall the proper way? Or is it just like a shortcut back to the top for some reason? Like, let's see, you can go like... I know this works, yeah, so you can like go down here. Beautiful, but I don't think there's like anything really... Yeah, you're not missing out on it. So let's go to the flying pad. And go up to where that Cheeto page was. Yeah, the, the, the flying is definitely reversed. Which is just like confusing me a little bit. <laughs> Here now. Oh, so where am I exactly? The camera can turn the deep green. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I just. I didn't even see this passageway. This is just where we were before. Okay, and then this leads back to, to Unga Bunga's cave. And I just didn't see the, the, the pathway in the wall. That's funny. Okay, very good. Again, like, why this even needs to exist is kind of weird. It's a family game. Ending of Banjo Kazooie has a woman carrying it. <laughs> okay. Um. So what else can we do? Another room we can go into, which we haven't really done yet, is this door to the right here. That's only big enough for Banjo and Kazooie to fit into, and not the giant statue guy. But speaking of which, there is a code thing that you do on the floor here. And I don't remember it, but I do know how you figure it out. So we will come back to do that. Since I'm not gonna go like look up a, a thing for it. Gotta go for now, Boomer Bear, but thanks for the stream and good luck. Thank you so much. Hope you have an excellent night. Appreciate you checking out the Banjo 2 stream. Again, like you can't do anything in this level until you learn how to hang on to ledges. It's, just, it's it's definitely like the most used thing in this game. They were really impressed that they came up with the idea of making Banjo hang on to stuff, so they made sure you had to do it like 40 times. So the boots are back! You gotta use the boots to cross the... whatever it is. No health. And that's exactly why we just did that. Jam jars and bottles would have been more helpful if you could take shortcuts through that with their tunnels. And they wouldn't need the colors. That's true. That would have been neat if you did something like that. I mean, at least they give you the warp pads. And again, the first level is like, okay, it's not that big. First level's... First level in this game is as big as about, like, some of the mid-game levels in the first one. Actually, speaking of which, I think I'm forgetting something up there. Like, you, you go around that. Okay, we'll go up there, as so I forget what that is. But the, but the levels are going to get way bigger by the end. 
place. Yes, there's a, place, there's a way to go to the right here as well. Got all that stuff. I think over there. And if we go through this hole... So, I believe that going under the water and going through here leads you to, to the same area. But in this case, this one led us to this upper part where we were able to collect that, so fair enough. Oh, but I can't, um... How do I look now? I can't break that yet. So this is definitely going to be one of those cases of backtracking required, unless... Can you jump up there? Like, can I... From, like, with, with really well-timed jumps, can you ascend these pillars? No, probably not. Could I have jumped from that upper place I just was to that upper pillar I wonder? Like, it seemed like it was kind of far, but... Hmm. Hmm. Because the way this works is you go into this hole, and then you can knock the jiggy from pillar to pillar until it's low enough for you to get it. The question is, is there a way to, to break this one? Otherwise, this might be our first case of, like, you have to backtrack in order to get it. Yeah, so the, the, it's weird because compared to the first game, I'm definitely feeling like the controls are inverted, but... Hmm. It'll just take a bit of getting used to. <laughs> I don't want to harp on. But it's just like, why does, that, why does controlling some things feel different compared to what we just did, like, a week ago? And we already went over there. Okay. Um... Oof. You have to leave soon as well, Chris. You're not a big fan of needing to learn how to do a move from a tutor before you can use it, says Super Tom Brother. Oh no. Yeah, fair enough. What are we looking at here? Like that's one jiggy there. Uh, we're gonna learn the move in this in this stream that we can use to break that open. So like we could always come back after we learn that. That's one of the jiggies. One of the jiggies requires the transformation. Which we're just gonna go do now. And then, um, uh, the other empty honeycomb was by the entrance. And opening this door... Um, you know, I, I think it's a jiggy for another area. But here we can talk to this guy! Yeah, so we want to go in there as well. And again, we'll be given the code for this soon. I don't remember it offhand. It'd be funny if we just kind of like guessed it by accident. I doubt we'll be that lucky though. Alright. Yeah, I know. I do know how you learn. I just don't remember exactly what it is. But with that, we can go back out this door. You can if you ground pound at the right time, Christian. Interesting. You don't know if anyone cares about baseball, but Arizona Diamondbacks have scored 13 runs in one inning, says David Ray. Toronto Blue Jays actually won their first game today. Uh, if I was a betting man, I definitely would have lost that bet, but, uh, but good for them. Um, but yeah, hope everyone's baseball team is doing well in this opening day of the season. Unless you're the, um, the Dodgers or the Padres, I think they faced in Korea like a week ago. But okay. That's right, it is um, transformation time, and I could have used the warp pad, but I'm not used to them existing yet. I kind of forgot about it. That would have gotten us there much faster. All right, Ninja Gaiden fan. I have beat the original three Ninja Gaiden games. I don't know anything about the series besides that. I have, like, a sealed copy of Ninja Gaiden 3 on the Wii U, which I don't think is, any way, is, uh, is in any way related to the NES version. So there's that. But hey, it's a new character. It's Womba's Wigwam. And she is the person who transforms you into stuff in this game, not Mumbo. I heard that Mumbo was the best. But like, how does Mumbo have houses on this island anyway? But again, she just needs a Globo as well, which are always pretty easy to find. So... Wumba is 10 out of 10. 15, says David Ray. Make that 4. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the Diamondbacks, you guys got Moreno from us. Oh, my God. 
gosh, I miss Moreno. He was a great catcher, and the Toronto Blue Jays, because they are freaking managed by, like, dorks on a stick, traded away our, like, best uh, catching prospect, because why not? So, yeah, the enjoy. <laughs> you guys went to the, uh, you know, the playoffs and everything last year as well. You know, the, the World Series. Yeah, I miss Moreno. Uh, Toronto's catching lineup is leaves a lot to the pizza side. So why they made that move again? I could be I could be paid millions of dollars to make horrible moves like that, please. But instead of baseball, it's football time or soccer time, depending on your region of locale. So yeah, you just jump into the pool now when you wanna wanna switch who you are, and we're stony. He is like an inch shorter than Banjo, so he can fit into holes that otherwise you couldn't. And you can also communicate with these guys. I should have I should have demonstrated before. If you try to talk to these guys as Banjo and Kazooie, they, they speak gibberish. But now they give you hints if you talk to them. Which is why I think we do this now. And if we go back to the prison compound, I think when we talk to the guy that's here, he should tell us the code for the door. To free the trapped one, a star, sun, star, two moons. Alright, let's not forget that in like three seconds. The star... No, 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 no! It's, uh, they're very strange buttons. It's like they kind of like suck you into the middle of them, so star... Sun, just like when you get like even a little bit close. Moon. There you go. Yes, Christian, yes. And with that, we can now talk to this guy. My little rabid friend. It's Dilberta. So again, another one of those massive boulders are in this room. And we haven't learned the attack that lets us break those yet. So, we saw the one jiggy we need to do with that, and we'll have to come back anyway to do this one. So, instead of trying to break things, we'll just come back in like 10 minutes after we've learned that move. It's not going to be much longer. And the other thing we need to do with this guy, if I remember the button to press, is if we go back to the entrance area here, we can now play some football! Or kickball, or whatever they call them in this game. After a very long walk to the bottom. In fact, I probably should have uh, gone to the entrance. I thought that that pad was closer, but it appears it was not. And uh, yeah, this guy runs. Actually, in fact, I really should have gone back to the entrance because what if I fall in the water? Okay, hopefully we have not soft locked ourselves. They definitely, hopefully, thought of uh, you know this possibility happening. And it'll be an easy ramp or something to get us out of here. We also found that Jinjo down here, which I had forgot was here, so it's a good thing we accidentally found that guy. Otherwise, we might have been searching around for a couple hours. But yeah, with Stony now, we can go behind the entrance and into that hole for an empty honeycomb. And we will be finding out what to do with these very shortly. There's also like a little bit of an area to the sides here that doesn't do anything, but it's there. And now the very slow walk up the stairs. You don't like that your shoulder barge no longer allows you to break boulders. Well, I was looking over at the chat for a second. The dark guy got me. Wait, the, the shoulder barge breaks boulders? Like, like like the ones inside the cage in the original? I don't think I knew that. Like it must have been unintentional then. And we'll talk to this guy over here. I don't think he provides any, like, really useful information. So shoot the giant stone ones. Okay, well, we already did that. So here we go. This is the last Jiggy. So most levels also have a mini-game component to them as well. And that's where this comes in. You can only do this when you're transformed into Stony. No, 14 runs is amazing in one inning. Oh, 
And I think the last warp pad will be in here, which actually allows you to then teleport in here, even when you're not transformed into Stony, which is cool. But yeah, here's the minigame. And what else is in here again? Yeah, there, there's that. We won't be finding out, finding out about that until later. There's also a training thing, which I think will be good. We're going to do three rounds of football here, so let's go. Oh, that's true. Yeah, do you even have that attack in this game? I don't think we've done it yet. Door number one. So this is another mini game featured as part of the multiplayer, should you ever do that. So may the best Stony win. So in this one, I think it's like whoever has the most points. And you shoot the ball into your own net, which is like really weird. And it's the trigger that shoots it. Oh, uh, they are very slow in the first round. I don't remember them ever being that bad, but apparently. And yeah, that's all there is to it. Like, the concept is just so weird, you know, you're putting the ball into your own net. But, uh, it's what they ask, so I guess we'll do it. You can also walk it in, if you're close enough. You can also, like, kind of steal it from them. If you barge into them at the right time. Come on, two more points! Yeah, 18! <laughs> Four-player Pong, kind of super town, kind of. There you go, we won. Quarterfinal. We're on to the semifinals. So yeah, no, 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 nothing too difficult here. But the, as you can see, that's why banjo Tooie is a little bit longer. Because you get more mini-games, more bosses, the levels are just bigger on top of all that. And yet, they condense all of the notes to being in like a straight freaking line. Doesn't make any sense. So now there's red ones, and those reduce a player's score by one. So if there's like someone who seems to be getting a big lead, you can kind of try and you know, take them down. But since it only takes off one, you know, by the time you've put all the effort into shooting that into someone's net, you could have just gone and uh, you know, got a yellow ball in instead. But yeah, nothing too difficult about this. I don't remember this being this easy. I don't know if they like reduced the difficulty for the, for the Xbox version or what. Or again, maybe it's just been a long time since I've done this, but... Seems a little easy. <laughs> I gave Red two points just for fun. When you were in school, kickball was a variant of baseball where you kicked a red rubber ball instead of hitting a baseball. We called... Oh, we had a name for that. We played that a few times as well. What was it called? Soccer. I think we called it soccer baseball. <laughs> because of, obviously, the combination of the two elements. But yes, I very much remember soccer baseball. Yes, 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 block frog, yes. I know there's bombs you can throw at the guys as well. To, like, stun them for a moment, but... This is kind of a pain. Okay, they're a little faster now, it looks like. Oh, it just missed. No. <laughs> no, give that back. All right. All right. No. Ugh. And there you go. That's all there is to it. Like, they, they don't load very many yellow balls at once. Woohoo! We just called it kickball. I mean, that makes total sense, right? So there you go, we're the new kickball champion, and I think that's everything to get for now. Until we come back with the uh, the ability to break those, those boulders. So again, with a little bit of, you know, trickery, glitches, you can bypass some of the backtracking for sure. Oops, not that way. But we might as well humor the game a little bit and do things a little bit by the book. I went right under that guy's legs. Like, whoa. And you don't even get health for that. 
The yeah, faces of the opponents almost look like Donkey Kong Island. That's a funny observation. All right, are we done in Mayhem Temple? Any objections? Aside from the things mentioned that we will come back and get later. And yeah, of course, you only have to pay the Globo the first time. Per level, of course. So, with that, I think we can now teleport back to the entrance. And with our new ability to grab onto ledges, there is a whole slew of stuff opened up in the Isle of Hags. We now need to go collect. <laughs> Not just um, the treble clef I, saw, I showed you earlier as well. So the first thing would be over here. And this is normally related to stop and swap. So you're, wanna, uh, you're gonna wanna keep your eyes peeled here and see how this may differ in the N60, uh, sorry, in the Xbox version. Is this not, no. No, 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 okay. I'm getting things confused again. Magic global creatures are usually found near, yeah, not, uh, not too tough there. No, this is not the area I'm thinking of. That's where you come out. That's that. Oh, oh, the area is um, by the Jinjo houses. Okay. So I guess we'll head back there. Then. Watching YouTube on a 55 inch TV and chatting on YouTube app on your phone, Super Tom Brother. Really happy that's working out. And sorry to those who like having the chat on the screen. I could put like a really not great quality chat on there that doesn't have a black outline. I fear it'd be like impossible to read though. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, trying to figure out how to make it look right since I'm using Restream now. Hopefully there's some people enjoying this uh, the stream on Twitch as well. If you are, hope you're having a great night. But to everyone who's watching, thank you. Hope you're having fun. Okay, so we should definitely be able to do this now. Just a question of... Yeah, there you go. And then again, so here's the treble clef. So even the ILO hags has notes to find. A hundred of them, of course. So there's 20 right off the bat. For some reason, like, just, you know, stick them all together. You have all this empty space you could have put notes in, but you just stuff them in nests and call the day. That's weird. See how that guy's so tiny there? It was funny because earlier I thought it was like a tiny version of the guy, but it was actually a big one and he was farther away than I thought. <laughs> Ooh, that was an exclamation mark, honeycomb. So again, here's an area we could not access before because we could not hang on to ledges. Can you still break windows? Uh, it was always like a selective thing in the original game. That looks like a Banjo-Kazooie game pack for the Xbox 64. Stop and swap two found and the winner is, it's a spark, sparkling golden, just take care of it. So there you go, so those game packs still have eggs inside. But how does the stop and swap work in Banjo-Kazooie then? Ow. Like if we go to our stats screen now, and objects and items. Oh! Oh! Huh. Oh, stop and swap two! So now, so okay, so we have stop and swap from the original game. And then we have stop and swap two, which I guess is where the stop and swap items that were added into Banjo 2 e since the original stop and swap was scrapped, I guess they get listed under there. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so that explains how those things work now. Gotcha. Deliver it to the chicken, says Raynock. Yes. Stop and swap two nuts and bolts. Yeah, so that will be... I think there's also some nuts and bolts crossover stuff as well, which will be cool to see. And one other thing we'll do out here is if we go find the fly pad. And I showed you that secret tunnel on top of the waterfall. We should be able to get that game pack as well. Whoa, climbing up the back? I've never seen that. Kind of scary. So I'm going to get this stuff now. We are not going to go to trade it all in until we have collected all of it, which will be the next stream probably. The next stream will probably begin with Banjo-Kazooie 1, us going and getting all the stuff in that. 
and then we'll trade all of these items in. That time. So yeah, when you have the ability to hang on to ledges, you can come back here and get this guy as well. Again, I love how he just left it as like an N64. Wow, so it does look different. Better than a slap. Yeah, so I know what these are. Interesting. So that makes me really curious then what the ones from the first game are gonna do. Some of the things were too difficult to change in the remaster, I guess. Yeah, so they just kind of left those as they were. Very interesting. And with that... <laughs> I was hoping we could zoom into the door. We are running low on health. Where's someone I can go beat up and get the, a little bit of that back? Alrighty then. So I think that wraps up what we're doing in these areas. So let's head back into here. Thursday had been so fun when you stream Rareware games. I'm so happy to hear that, Raynock. Thank you. I thought, you know, Rareware just made some fantastic games. I thought it would be fun to, to dedicate a, a day of the week to them. I'm happy that others have thought so as well. I've been having a great time playing the, uh, the Banjo games, and I'm really excited for Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. But I've been really excited for Banjo-Tooie as well, so let's not rush it. But now we can do this, and it will lead us to another area of Isle Hags, where the next level is, although now that I think about it, Okay. We'll go here first. I'm supposed to go back to that temple and unlock the next level. So it's going to be closed when we get here, but we'll come check out this area first just for fun. There's definitely some cool stuff we can do here. So, one thing we can do is go learn this move. What would they have changed the N64 cartridge to anyway? Like a disc or something? So we're learning new egg moves in this game. Fire eggs. Which are a little bit better than normal eggs. Like not that much better, but a little bit better. There was always a glitch in my N64 version where like they would get stuck at max at 50. No matter how many I used. And like it wasn't the cheat that I entered. Like they were just glitching for some reason to get stuck at max. I don't know if anyone else ever experienced that. And, oh, he smashed his face. I mean, he didn't really do anything wrong to us, honestly. Bottles is, uh, is our enemy. But Jam Jars, I don't got anything against him. And we got some more notes around. And there's going to be some stuff back here as well. Another empty honeycomb. And that one's kind of in the shadow. It's weird. So this giant beehive here. You gotta change it to the original Xbox console. Yes, Reyna. Here we got Honeybee, mistress of the honey. Why couldn't you be mistress of the chickies instead? So this is where we bring all of those empty honeycombs. They don't just uh, automatically give us extra health in this game. We have to bring them here and she trades different amounts in for additional health segments. And the amount that she requires goes up as you continue to get more health. I think we should be able to, uh, to trade like a couple now, which would be good. Hornet girl. Two more, heck yeah. So let's do it. So like, yeah, you could play the game on hard mode and just never trade these in. But hey, you know, I'll take two more segments. And now we need five more for the next type, for the next one. Jam Jar's outfit reminds you of Sergeant. St really? And with that, here we go. So, we also got notes on top of this sign here. We hear a Jinjo underneath that rock. Which again, we're seeing lots of those giant boulders. Rotate that. We can activate this for easy access to this area again. 
We can shoot fire eggs at this sign. It's a little, tr a little tricky to, uh, to aim with the, um, with the Xbox stick. Now, I, I want to sequence break a little. I just want to have a peek inside here and see how many notes it requires to unlock this thing. Because this thing is important. Like, this is the thing that you want in this game. And you will never use anything else ever again. Yes, we are unlocking this right now. Does it usually say, like, the name? So, Grenade Eggs. This is the most OP, like, why ever use anything else item in the entire game. So, I just skip right to here and unlock them now. You are going to be happy that you did. So, you can hold 25 of those. And uh, those make me very happy. But we're not going to spend too much more time in this area otherwise. Sneak peek of what's to come. Let's head back out here. You don't much like the first person aiming of eggs compared to aim uh, of the guns in uh, Donkey Kong 64. Yeah, Donkey Kong 64 did a really good job of, uh, of the guns and stuff. Every Kong gets their own thing. Okie dokie. So, again, we got to go unlock this level. But I know there's a way you can glitch through this. Let's see if we can do it just for a laugh. Like, I think it's like you can glitch through where the, where the grate meets the... Um, unless they fixed it. And, like, there's no reason to do this because it's so easy to unlock this level anyway. I guess if you're just like a, like a speed runner, sequence breaker. Watch, we'd get stuck in there or something silly if we did it too. Whoops. I know we can go back and unlock that. I just want to see. Like, I, can, I can do this. I've done it before. Just for fun. But again, it's possible that they fixed it in this version. I think it was this side I used to do it on. They probably fixed it. <laughs> you know, they fixed all the other glitches, not this one. Or, you know, they fixed this glitch and not all the other ones. Uh, let's see, don't let, um, then again, you think your hands would wobble. I mean, no. Oh. Alright, we will go and do it the legit way. Everyone's probably getting sick of hearing the sound. But there definitely is like a thing you can do here, at least on the 64 version. Where you clip through between the grate and the wood. And it's like a speed run trick, but this is this is a slow run, so no no speed run tricks here. And see the grenade eggs, since we unlocked them, I should at least demonstrate them to you. Yeah, aim at a guy. Wherever he might be. No, really, where did he go? <laughs> and that's why they're great. And I don't think that grenade eggs can blow up the rocks, though. I think we still need to go get that other move that we're thinking of. No fun allowed, says Fierce the Eating Mask. Welcome! Hope you're having a great night. Thanks for stopping by. And you're watching on Twitch over there. Very nice. Uh, so where are we going? We're gonna go back to the Jiggy Palace thing. Just chilling, Daniel. That's yeah, great. Nothing wrong with just chilling. Shortcut glitches are crazy in Nintendo 64 games. Absolutely. So many crazy things you could do back then. Mario freaking like backwards long jump up the stairs. Oh, it's good. Look at that, uh, the reflection effect on the floor. That's neat. All right, we only needed four Jiggies. We got a whole 10 of them. Here we go. And again, like compared to the fact that we did these in the last game and we got all of them on our first try, these don't become difficult until like later on. If they ever become difficult, I forget. There might even be like, um, oh wait, that's the other one. Like more, like extra ones too. It is weird kind of lining it up. There you go. And with that, level two should be open. Legit. 
the scenes that it shows for the for the backgrounds of the of the puzzles are like very random. Like it, it's it's just odd. <laughs> Fierce Dave's on the key has he, he, he very well might. I guess we'll never know. Honestly, I'm, I'm not quite interested in asking, but... There you go. Take that, stupid metal grate! That's what you get. If it had just let me glitch by it, we never would have had to do that. Oh, we already have enough to open up the next level? Honestly, we should just get it done, because why Why bother making an extra trip back? Yeah, you did eight. I forget how strict Banjo-Tooie gets in terms of completion. Um, because we talked about in Banjo-Kazooie 1, how you have to collect, like, um, you know, 94, I think it is, yeah, 94 out of the 100 Jiggies to even fight the final boss. Or get, uh, you know, 810 notes out of 900 to get up there. Like, that's, that's, a, that's really strict for a game back then. And I love it. They want you to get jiggy with it. Never knew about that glitch block frog. Again, I apologize I wasn't able to show it to you. Uh, we did have that epic skip, though, with the, um, you know, the fire in the prehistoric area earlier. The last jigsaw puzzle on the first game took you many tries because you didn't realize at first that the shapes don't change where they go. I'll probably pull a Rayman and need to get everything, says Dan. Hey, we saw this room ever so briefly. Spoiling what the third level is going to be. You have to blast that whole gate just to like ever so gently open it. Did someone say, take that, said Miles? <laughs> oh no, we don't have enough. What is it going to be like, 14? I don't know if we can ever, ever accomplish that, everyone. Sounds kind of tough. Oh, I knew it, too. See, like, little things in the back of my mind, like random numbers, um, are still there. And while the door closes, it won't even let us in if we don't have enough. How rude. But with that, we'll now enter the second level. And that's probably what we'll do tonight. We'll probably finish up the second level. How long have we been streaming? Wow, over, over two hours already. Again, so we're gonna be doing the second level. Where am I going? Plateau. Where, those, those were like out of order-ish? Compared to where I thought they should be? Maybe. Maybe I'm making things up. But we'll see how long we've been playing. I doubt we'll be taking on like another level after this one. But yeah, Glitter Gulch Mine is level two. And you open up these boxes. You got the speedy shoes from the first game and also a new shoes that we have not yet unlocked in Banjo 2. You say we're gonna get new shoes in this game. Springy step shoes. They just give you like a super high jump while you're wearing them. And you're supposed to use them to get that Cheeto page on top of the sign over there, but you can absolutely cheat from the top of this and get it anyway. So, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I actually overshot it. But uh, but yeah, so you don't need the shoes at all. It's, it's, a, it's a big farce. Oh my gosh, how do I keep doing that? This is going to be this like half an hour game time in Glitter Gulch Mine. Haven't even stepped foot inside the mine yet. Oh, five, everybody. We can cheat. Christian, gotta go. You might be back. Hope you have a great night, Christian. And if you come back, that'd be awesome too. But otherwise, take care. Warrior, Wear a Warrior World on GameCube. Haven't seen it for a decent price. Yeah, it's unfortunately... Yeah, GameCube prices, 64 prices going way up. Did I hear about Mario 64 glitching the clock level? That's supposed to be caused by uh, iodized particle. So yes, that's been uh, going around for a long time. There's like a big bounty on that and such. Honestly, the 64 is just glitchy as crap. <laughs> like you just look at the 64 wrong, the wrong way. Sometimes it feels like your games start glitching out. That seems more likely to me than you know space magic. But uh, but what do I know? I'm not the Mario 64 speedrunner, but. You know, as someone who's had funky stuff happen with the N64 before, you know, it doesn't surprise me to see something like that happen once in the blue moon. So, all right. Hey, Glitter Gulch Mine. Let's get, let's get serious, everyone. I don't remember much about 
what order to do things in this level or where everything is exactly. This is where the game gets a little bit bigger, a little bit fuzzy in my mind. So we'll see how it goes. But we got this big box here. And I don't think we can end, uh, open the tunnel yet. I think you have to open it from the other side. No, 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 you can do that, okay. So yeah, again, this is where the point of the game comes where you're welcome to scream at me if I'm absolutely screwing things up. But give me a chance at least. Cause yeah, things are getting bigger. I'm trying. I, I I think I remember where the attack that we want is, and that's what I'm kind of trying to get to right now. Once I remember the general area of that. But you see, there's lots of stuff to do in this level. It's pretty crazy. So we're over here now. See, we gotta go get Mumbo. He has a whole bunch of arbitrary tasks to complete. And go down in that door. What is this door? I don't know. I don't like where this is leading. It's kind of scary. Okay, so a lot of things that have to do with the transformation of this level. Oh, uh, let me see here. Dreamcast games going way up too. Oh, I know it's 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 ridiculous. That's kind of the, the generation they're at right now. Like around Gen Six is going up, um, which is why I say, you know, collect if you like the Wii U, collect for it now, because that will be the Wii U in five to ten years. And I didn't realize for the longest time that Terraria had like a physical copy on the Wii U. So, if I had known, I probably would have bought it earlier. I really want to try it online before it's, uh, the online is shut down. So, I, I, I cracked and I actually bought uh, a copy off eBay. And then I, I checked the location. It's, it's not too far from where I am. So, I asked, you know, please, I'd like to you know, try this online before it shuts down. So, if you could ship it as quickly as possible, that'd be great. And they literally had it shipped out within like an hour of that. So, they must, uh, they must have actually listened, which is really amazing. So now I'm just kind of checking the tracking every day, hoping it arrives sometime like next week and I'll have a chance to play it online once before it shuts down forever. But I called like 10 to 15 stores in my area and none of them had Terraria for Wii U. So you can already feel like, you know, if, if Wii U games are hard to find now, just imagine in 10 years. So, you know, pretty much every Wii U game you buy this day is a good investment. But we just learned the drill! beak now and that will allow us to break open all of those big circular rocks that have been hiding around and find the juicy goodness within like that so yeah this is um along with wall grabbing ledge grabbing it's like the most important move in this game you get grenade eggs ledge grabbing and the drill ground pound and like, that's all you need <laughs> You hope it comes Friday, says Daniel. That'd be, uh, I mean, like, t so here's the thing that kind of throws a wrench into everything as well. Uh, it's a long weekend and not just a long weekend, but like a super long weekend where in Canada, there's going to be no mail delivery tomorrow or on Monday. So watch, it's, it's, it's going to arrive like one day too late or something. All because of the freaking long weekend. But for those of you who have a day off, I hope you enjoy. Glad you got all the Wii U, uh, Wii U HD games back in 2017. Good price back then. People didn't care much about Wii U. Glad you went with the Wii U instead of the Vita. Nice. Still have your favorite GameCube games. Melee, Luigi's Mansion, Animal Crossing, Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door. Yeah, those are all great games. Yeah, no mail on... So, so yeah, in the US, you guys even have mail on, like, Saturday. In Canada, we don't even have that. It's Monday through Friday. And then they take, they, they find like every excuse possible to take a day off. So, you know, again, so no mail tomorrow, no mail ma Monday. So that's going to leave, um, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Hopefully, it, hopefully it shows up. So, yeah, so we need to save this guy's dude. And as you can see, we are now back in Mayhem Temple and on the other side of a rock that we need to use the drill crown kind of beat. Get past. So we need to go back to that level and do that. And then he'll be happy and give us a jiggy, so very good. The Zelda HD games, yeah, those um, those are going up too, I see. 
Alright, what's the next thing we want to do? That was a lot of explaining <laughs> for a lot of random stuff. Yeah, so this level, you have like this main area here, and there's like a lot of side areas. Like, uh, you know, that required to break those boulders and such. I don't remember much about the side areas, or like, you know, which one is which. That was always a problem as a kid. You know, I'd find an area, and I'd want to get back to it, and I would like forget how to get back. Like, just for a laugh, let's see what's in this one. Oh, there's the Globo. Oh, prison compound, okay. So we got Jinjo in there. How do I... Oh, okay, okay, can go for that wall. Go in here. Not a big deal. What's here? Is this another rock I can break? The color is very, uh, very dark. Huh? Hopefully everyone can see everything all right. And another rock I can break. Maybe I'll do that after. Just to keep track of where we've been and where we haven't. Oh, we got split up pads. Okay, so now I'm getting really afraid. Like, just how little am I going to be able to do in this level before we need to backtrack and do stuff? The generators need to be lit. Let the switch on. Lights require. They split. So yeah, we haven't even, like, learned how to do that yet. Okay, so I guess we're done in here for now. Wish you'd kept your PSP. The yeah, PSP was really cheap for a long time. Is it going up now too? There's this. We have double, double paths here. Again, we're gonna get lost really fast in this level. All right, I know all about this. So here. Switch our eggs to fire eggs, and if you do this... Again, the one time you'll like, shoot eggs, like you do in the original game. It activates the lights so we can cross the scary pathway. Again, no death runs so far. You can also just shoot the fire eggs and like it will, you know, very briefly light up the path. But I guess this is um, a little more efficient. Ooh, and they start introducing holes and stuff. I have so much more trouble aiming the camera where I want to in this game. Because remember, L and R are also tied to um, uh, switching eggs as well, and I think that messes things up a little bit. Oh, yeah, this one. You gotta look over here and do a thing like this. I'm trying to change the camera. It's not doing what I want to. And why would you hit this? Is this like if you want to go back the, the slow way? I guess so. But there you go! I think, is that our first Jiggy in this level? So these things are getting a little more involved. And then you get this ladder here, which kind of leads you back down. And can you cheat actually? I think there's a speedrun thing where you can like cheat and grab this ladder just climb up to begin with. Like, it seems kind of broken if that's true. But maybe not. I don't know why it has to zoom in so much just because I'm using the, the ladder. Okay, maybe... Maybe it doesn't let you do it quite. <laughs> what if I... Like, maybe you could, like, jump on top of the lantern and cheat up there. This is going to lead to our first death, by the way, so, so don't blink. Okay, before we do something silly. Yeah, PSP, the biggest problem with the PSP is that the batteries are all, like, expanding and blowing up. Where is this? Alright, so this is, like, a different entrance then. <laughs> yeah, this level gets, uh, pretty complicated pretty fast. Here's another warp pad. I don't even know where we are. Train station. Okay, okay. Well, that brings us in here. Yeah, we gotta bring Mumbo in here. So, hopefully, hopefully everyone's keeping track of all the places that we need to bring Mumbo. 
We can also go into the back of the train. I don't think there's any reason to do that right now. It's like it's whole separate area. And there's lots of signs around. Some are useful, some are not. This year's going by so fast, I can't believe it. I can't believe we're almost in April. <laughs> Time has just been flying, but I hope, I hope all of you had a nice year so far. Making the best of it. Alright, what's under this guy? Jinjo! Ooh, one out of two orange ones, everybody. So again, it seems like the, uh, the orders are truly random, or the colors are truly random, because... I always thought maybe it was just like, you know, file 1 always has the same ones here, file 2 always has the same ones here, but it seems like it is just, uh, just randomized, which is cool. Whenever you play, like, it's back right here, 3 out of 6 red ones. Very nice. Where do I want to go now? Let's go again. We've seen lots of stuff to do with Mumbo. Uh, the Wumba transformation in this level is very important, too. But I know there's still stuff I can do with just Banjo and Kazooie. But again, the level's kind of big. So I'm having a little bit of trouble remembering where exactly I've been. Is this the level where Mumbo and Mumba are connected? Inside? I forget. I know there's one level that's weird like that. No. Well, at least not on that side. Uh, maybe this side? No. Would be a different level. And also, sometimes there are things hidden up in the rafters, so you gotta check too. There's the Globo. Right? No, it's just a book. It was trick. PST Modern Homebrew is awesome. Yes, yeah, PSPs are absolutely destroyable. There's the Globo. Um, you can do so much with a modded PSP. There we go. So this is back near the beginning again, and one thing that we want to do from here is we saw the speedy shoes earlier on. So let's grab those. First time wearing them in this game, by the way. And we can step on this switch. And I like how it gives you like a nice preview of exactly what the heck it's doing because... Um, otherwise you'd never know, it's really far away. One new feature of the shoes in this game is that you can run on top of water. I don't believe that was a feature in the original. So we can just run right on top of this. And make it to that door before it closes. Let's see if it's any less, uh, you know, any more lenient than the original game. It seems like every time you were required to run, uh, you were required to run somewhere with the shoes, you got like exactly as much time as you needed. In this case, we could be taking some shortcuts, but wow, okay, they give you tons of extra time. And that brings you to the Waterfall Cavern. I know there's some stuff to do in here. There's quite a few things to do in here. Like one thing, is there's this Jiggy. Up here. And there's a whole bunch of doors we got to go in as well. Is there something in this pool? Doesn't look like it. We actually completed Banjo Kazooie shortly after watching my playthrough. Before that, you're only missing the achievement for the bottles jigsaw puzzles. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much for for kind of playing along or you know watching and then playing. Happy I could help with that. Can't do that yet. And we got two doors here. No, we have just one. And that brings us to this room. Now I know there's some things in this room you're not supposed to be able to get until later. Let's see how well my memory is serving me in that regard. Can you do something with these guys? I think there's some things in the water here too. There's the treble clef. Just hiding in the in the muddy water. Yeah, I don't like the inverted swimming controls underwater. Like, it definitely wasn't like that in the last game. We can probably change that in the options, right? I don't think the, the 64 version had inverted swimming controls. And, like, there's times when I like inverted controls, but not when you're swimming. Someone's welcome to correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, there's you can't even change it. 
Oh. Deathmatch Modern. Okay. But what about settings? Wait, what was that Jiggy Tips? Restore. Okay. Hopefully uh, the volume levels have been okay. Let me know if uh, anything needs to be adjusted. Jiggy Tips? I hope it doesn't like, you know, remove me from the leaderboards as I'm getting cheats or something. Whoa! Whoa! It gives you a checklist! That is crazy! I don't- did the original game have that? Did I just not go into the options and see that? Oh, Blockfrog! Hope you have a great night! That is scary! That there's a checklist for the Jiggies. Wow. Okay, well, I didn't look at it too hard. Because, again, that's not something that's in the original. I mean, I generally know where they are anyway. But, you know, if you're really curious, I mean, it's, it's definitely a useful thing for Banjo-Tooie, considering that there are some you can't get your first time visiting the level. You gotta, you're gonna have to go back and do. But, wow, I had no idea they had added that. And now I'm really curious if it was in the first game. And in fact, when we do play the first game, again, for the stop and swap stuff, we can check. But very interesting. A checklist. Thank you, Xbox, says Super Tom Brothers. I mean, yeah, like, I'm not against a, a checklist for the Jiggies. And again, you know, at least it's hidden away enough that if you don't want to look at it, you don't have to. Cheeto time! That's right, we can go back and get a cheat whenever we feel like. Or we can just, like, you know, build up all of the pages and then go do it. I like that you can kind of save yourself with that. So there is a Jinjo over there. However, we cannot get up there from this side. We need to go through that pipe and down, and as you can see, you can kind of climb up that chain there. Um, and that's not something that we get to do until much later. So again, there, that was a purple guy. Don't we only need like one more purple guy? Oh, we haven't found any purple guys. Orange guy, we need one more though. And I think we're done in this room otherwise. But yeah, so see, that's an example of something that you're not supposed to be able to get until a little bit later. And this leads us back to here somewhere. To this building. Okay, so yeah, we need to bring Mumbo for this. I think we already went up this hill and there were some notes up here. Yes, very good. Um, there's a Jiggy up there. But I think this box is going to have the spring shoes in it. So we can't even get up there without that. Um, and is there anything else that we haven't really done yet? Bef uh, excluding like the transformation. So this is a room that would probably benefit us to go do something on the main overworld and come back to. But you can't also just kind of keep going out and coming back in. Because yes, so that's uh, your air meter in this game is indicated by the bubbles on the left side. And not blue honeycombs like in the first game. Is this one of those open world games that lets you do some things out of order? Uh, so the levels, uh, you, you see how we're traversing the, uh, the ILO hags. And you kind of hit the levels in the order they're intended to be played. But you're welcome to skip some of them if you wish. And kind of go on to the next ones. But you might be missing moves which, uh, which would otherwise be helpful. Anything under here at all? I don't think the water really has anything under it. Okay, so, wait, but the, the controls, I thought I was promised... Fix the controls, maybe. Okay. Weird. Didn't I change the, in the options? Like, if I look here... Something like that. But okay, so now we want to go find Wumba, and let's do some TNT stuff. Just like right here. Oh, gotta, gotta pay her first. Oh, 
But did I ever play Soul Reaver? No, I haven't. I haven't played that one. So we can use a self-destruct attack with this guy, and the problem with that is that it uses 1 HP every time we use it. I don't th if we do this, I don't think this consumes any HP. But yeah, the only way to hurt other enemies when in TNT mode hurts you as well, which is really painful. Alright, we're in here now. Again, I should probably... So this is the most annoying character in Banjo-Tooie. Yeah, I've been across that bridge before, so yeah, it, it really is surreal. Especially, you know, if you live close to it, wow. I hope everything, like, I, I hope everything's okay. I'm sure it's probably gonna mess things up for a long time. But yeah, one time I, I um, I went to Baltimore. And I took a taxi, and the guy's like, oh, you know, I'll take you the scenic route, which essentially just means he's going to take you the longer way <laughs> to charge you more at the end. And uh, and we went across that bridge. So yeah, it's crazy to think it's like, oh, it's gone now, but... Yeah, so we broke that box open. It didn't really have anything all that useful inside. Right, so we need to come back with Banjo, I think, for that. What else can we blow up with the TNT? should be some other things. Although, again, I forget kind of where they all are. What did we see? Like, three or so different things? Oh, yeah, there was the one with the, um, with the UFO box. What if, if he goes in the water, I wonder what happens. What is she? I mean, <laughs> no, it's almost like a giant canary for some reason. Super Tomber, are you the only one in the chat who hasn't played this game much? You really wanted to complete the first game before moving on to this one? No, for sure! It's always best to, to play the games in order, I think. Appreciate you checking this out. Though, no, this is not where I want to be. In fact, there's, there is one area um, that's on my mind that we definitely haven't found yet. I forget exactly where it's located, but we do need to do- Oh, no, no, no! Not what I wanted. Um, world Entrance and Exit. And yeah, you don't really have much way to, to heal yourself as this guy. Because it costs you one health to do anything. Ooh, but I could grab that. Again, just mashing the whole button pad. Because <laughs> I forget which button it was supposed to be. And that gave us some nice health back, which is good. Yeah, so one thing we needed to do with the TNT was up here. And that opens this side, but I believe we still need to open one more door from the other side. Which is not happening in this level, it will happen in the, ne in the, uh, in the next level. So there's always like these multi-part puzzles that can't all be solved at once. And what happens if we try to go out there here? Well, it won't even let me go out the door because I'm transformed into a uh, into the dynamite stick. Interesting. But okay, so that's it for this room then. What does water do as the TNT? Okay, he floats. Fair enough. Unlike Stony, who just uh, sunk like a stone, fittingly enough. Wow, that health didn't despawn. Oh, speak of the devil. Oh no, never did this. Okay. That might be the area I'm thinking of that we haven't uh, explored yet then. And I know there was at least a couple more things to do with the TNT guy, I thought, anyway. Again, movement around this level is pretty slow. But, um... I mean, what about in some of these doors, probably? There's gotta be something. 
Hello, Plague Eagle. You love you love this game. It brings back memories. I'm really happy to hear that. Hope you enjoy seeing uh, Banjo Tooie. It's a fantastic game. We recently streamed the entirety of Banjo Kazooie, uh, which was really fun. We're playing the HD version on the Xbox 360. Hope you enjoy seeing more of it. Currently trying to find all the stuff to blow up with the TNT in Litter Gulch Mine. And that's right. There was like that one place with like the um with the cells. The prison cells, too. If I can remember where that was. But there's gotta be something inside this house. <laughs> just blows the whole whole thing up. You think it's just gonna blow the door off, but no, the whole place goes. Ooh, the flooded caves. I forgot about those. Okay. Naturally, we gotta come back with Banjo and Kazooie for that one. And yeah, the one other one I can think of was that cell that had a Jinjo inside question is where the heck was that and there was a couple things to do with mumbo this rock and the train come to mind which this game on remake on switch oh even just to have it on nintendo switch uh, online would be fantastic uh, i've always waited for it to be updated there and always said i would play it if it was ever released for that but instead we're playing the 360 version which honestly i'm enjoying quite a bit You get achievements and all that too. <laughs> it's like, well, why not? Maybe it was this thing beside Mumbo's here. Well, if he can ever go in, in there, he, he bounces on his own. Sadly, it's not happening. You know what? Really expensive on the N64? All the Mario Party games. Oh. But at least, again, those are on Nintendo Switch Online, which I know it's a subscription service, which sucks. But at least at least they're accessible through that. And plus they have online play, which is really nice. We do need to have another Mario Party night. Sometime. If I can ever get in here. So again, he's bouncing on his own. That's not me doing that. I was going to say, maybe uh, you have to bring uh, Banjo back. He can't get in here. In fact, that might have been a good idea. Because if I get stuck in here, it won't be so fun. I'm trying to blow the guy up. Every time it looks like he's gonna run towards me. Um, he, he would stop for some reason? Okay, come on. Go through it. You can do it. Go through the door. Why would you make the dynamite guy blow up a door and then not even let him fit through it? Oh! Oh my gosh! We found both of them already! That was fast! Crazy to think this game is like 20 plus years old. So what, it was uh, 2000 it was released, right? The HD Xbox version came out in 2009. And now here we are playing this 15 years later in 2024. So it took nine years for this version to come out after the original. And it's longer now since that happened that we're playing it. Like it's, ugh, oh, it hurts. And yet, you know, it just goes to show there's some old games that are still just so much fun. I'm having a great time. Hope all of you are as well. Like anything else to blow up in here? Like, what is this? This is a door. Oh, I didn't even go in this door before. Weird. Yeah. Oh. Um, so this area. Huh. So as I said, you can use fire eggs to, to go across that even without power, because yeah, that's how it's supposed to work, is you have one, I almost said Kong, character who stands on a switch, while the other one goes and explores down there. But with fire eggs, you can break that. Okay, so I need to go back here with uh, with the dudes. We've, we've discovered a few things now we can do with them. I think otherwise we're done with the TNT guy. I'm sure the second we tra you know transform back, I'll remember another spot we needed them, but... For now, November 20th, 2000. Yes, and I remember getting it for Christmas that year. Oh man, so good. This is Mumbo's, right? Yeah, okay, so. Oh. And we found all the warp pads, it looks like. That's cool, Super Tom. Um, no. I actually don't uh, own any console that Rare Replay will work on. That's why we're playing this on the uh, on the Xbox 360. That does sound neat, though, if I did have it. Okay. 
So now, let's head back in here. Into the gloomy caverns. Yeah, so again, to anyone watching this on YouTube, um, I apologize for the for the title and for the uh, for the thumbnail. YouTube really did me dirty on this one, having a glitch the very day we're playing Banjo Tooie and not let me sort things out correctly. We got Plague Eagle following me on Twitch. Thank you so much. I really hope you enjoy this and all of my future content as well. We play all sorts of retro stuff, and we have a lot of fun here. And hope you're having fun too. So that's what that's exactly what I said. One character is supposed to stand on that and light everything up. Well, the other character goes down and navigates the pathways. But you don't learn how to split up until a future level, so it's like, what the heck? But with fire eggs... Oh, I should have filled up to max of them. Like, so you can kind of cheat it. I... Again, I'm probably going to regret not going back to... Not refilling them. Oh man, this is this is tough. Yeah, I'm running out of eggs. In fact, I think the first Cheeto cheat is uh actually it might be feathers in this game instead of eggs. Let's flip it around in this one. Ooh, that one's getting thin. How much farther do you think we have to go? Ugh. Oh, uh -oh, we're running out. Like, we're definitely gonna get there. It's the way back that scares me. Alright. Now, does everyone remember the way back? Oh, I like how the, the jiggy surrounding me was causing light for a little bit there. Okay, oh, we got 14 left. We can do this. We can do this. I can't see myself to even know what I'm doing. Okay. 12. Oh, where am I? What do I think? <laughs> When I was a kid, you were scared of this part. This part's freaky. I, I, I'm i scared right now. What are you talking about? Is DK Oldies up to shenanigans again? I've given my opinion of them before. You know, business is gonna business. Um, you know, I think... You know, it, don't, don't patronize them if... You don't like their practices and such. I mean, you know, they do make people, I suppose, think... You know, that's the normal price for something. And if you go somewhere else... I might be able to find a better price, but it's always important to shop around and be a be a savvy consumer too. You know, if the business is charging a lot, you know, check some other places first before just buying is important too. But uh, I haven't looked into them in a long time. I don't know if they've done anything recent, <laughs> so I can't comment at the moment. But all right, so that was that. I think we survived with like three eggs remaining, which is kind of cool. But there you go. Back in the game, uh, back in the day when you got this game, it was like thirty dollars. I mean, that's that's totally you know, understandable for this game. In fact, thirty dollars isn't even a bad price for Banjo Tooie. I had to pay fifteen dollars for the HD version since I couldn't just get the rare replay, which people say is like five bucks. Um. What else we got going on here? We can do the... Oh, that's right. I opened up um, that water tunnel. I forget where that was now. <laughs> but we gotta go back and do that. And I think there was one other thing up here. I can break open now. Oh, thank you, Playgula, for liking my name. Appreciate that. That name goes way back. Did I beat the train part? No, we have not. Um, we need to flip the train back over with Mumbo. And we will do that probably after this. Where, yes, this is the room I was thinking of. Where we come in here, and there should be a move we can learn here. This is the last move of this level? 
So as you can see, we got Kazooie back in gun mode. Uh, there are three gun sections like this in the game. The first two show up in the first two levels, and the last one shows up, like, way later. Actually, there's a couple others as well, but th there's three main ones, so... Two of the main ones already done. After this, let's get our fire eggs back. So the move we just learned, we press X now, and we kind of do, like, a bash forward. <laughs> no, no problem, Super Tom, brother. So we need to go in here and we need to find all of the TNT sticks before they blow up. I don't think that counts as a death. Or maybe it will. <laughs> this could end the, the no death run right now. They never, like, it's, it's not random though. So if I remembered where the positions were, we could easily do it each time. But yeah, we have 15 to find. Or maybe the, okay, so once you hit the first one, 200 seconds, okay. Which is like a lot of time, but also it's kind of a big area too. And the, the enemies don't help. I'm sure, and what always ends up happening is like you get down to one left. And like the fact that they don't stop moving doesn't help. Okay. Nine left after 50 seconds. Go to the upper level here. Are we doing 100%? Of course we're doing 100%. It's the only way I play my games. 100%. So we didn't do that one yet, but I'm saving that one. But that's an easy one to find. This guy's kind of in like a secret room off to the side that doesn't connect to any other room, so he's easy to miss. Down to seven, we're halfway there. No, this is back to the beginning, I think. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. We don't want to be here. So back down here. Keep going around. Mm. <laughs> oh god, I'm getting lost. I'm forgetting where we've been and where we haven't been. See, I knew there was like a thing. It's, it's these side rooms that only have one entrance that are the trickiest. Six left. You see, we did this already. We definitely did this already. No, see, that's where we came in. If you accidentally go out there, I wonder if you can go back out. I can just, like, get my time back. Nah, I'm gonna have to do that. Alright, we're going down here. Ugh. Oh, no. Okay. You can kind of hear them. You just gotta listen. I think we did down here already. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. We gotta get one per ten seconds now. I can hear one. Like, one of these rooms. There's, like, 40 different rooms here. Four left. Uh oh. We gotta find them less than one per ten seconds now. Okay. I, he I hear multiple. We could get like really lucky. Wait, where else can we go? Right here. Oh, 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 oh. Don't do this to me! Don't do this to me! No! I hate those guys so much! Oh man, we were there. We were there too. Does that count as a death? I don't think that counts as a death. But... Oh, it sucks. That sucked. <laughs> F's in the chat. F's in the chat for freaking actually finding the last one. Somehow, like, a really epic victory at the end there.
Like, this attack sucks, and it doesn't even work half the time. But we know where they all are now, so it shouldn't be much of an issue. Like, there's this big delay between when you press the button and when he finally lunges forward, and you're just done after that. There was like down here, right? Here's this last one we got we saw last time. I don't remember this attack being like this in the original. Maybe it was. This is the only time you use it. Like you'll use it here and then just forget about it. I don't think it's ever really useful again. Who's my favorite boss? Again, once we see all the bosses, I'll be able to to give a better opinion of that. It's been so long since I fought some of them. See, like, it didn't even work on that guy. Um, and you might be wondering, like, why I'm not shooting the enemies. Or, like, uh, you know, shooting the sticks of dynamite. You can shoot the normal enemies, but if you shoot the, the sticks of dynamite, the, the mine blows up as well, so you gotta do the, the bashing thing on them. That'll take some health, though. Which one of these is the one we want? I think this one? Yes. It sounded like there was more up here, but I think this is this is the start, right? Just hearing things. Oh, don't accidentally shoot the dynamite. Oh, another guy. See, I hit that right on, and it didn't do anything. Now we're getting closer. Five. I think there's one up here. This way, one yeah. more here. Now I'm kind of forgetting where the rest are though, so fingers crossed we can figure this out. Now, like, we got these yeah. ones. Oh, I know there's some at the top we never got. Again, listen for that bouncing. Hopefully, you can hear it. I don't think I ever got this one. Nope. Two left. Like, where? Oh. Like, where? Where did I forget one this time? <laughs> I hate this so much. Oh, man. Yeah, this, this sucks. And also, enjoy the, the flashing lights. <laughs> That if this was on a Nintendo console, they definitely would have done that, like, blur effect instead. Oh, man. After, after how close we were the first time as well. Are you ready for round three, everyone? I think I remember which one I missed, too. Just didn't get there quite in time. What you could do is, like, go find, like, a really tough one and then make that your first one. So then the clock doesn't start until that. But yeah, again, this is one of the, the maps that when you actually play it multiplayer, it just becomes a... It just becomes a, a deathmatch map. Where it's like you versus your friends, going after each other. What's this? I don't want to do that quite yet. I 
this is wasting time. But I should just keep doing like the circle around the bottom, right? Until I found them all here. Alright, we're gonna be down to five with a hundred seconds left. We should get it this time. We should. Big asterisks there though. Like, which other way haven't I done? Like, I don't think I. Hmm. This, this is four. I hear two bouncing. Three. Oh, maybe down here. Uh -huh. And now where's the last two? Where are the last two? I know we've already done all this. Oh, I, think, I don't think I got that one on the upper level. So I go up here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I hear, I hear something. Yes! Oh, I think this is the one I forgot last time. And I think the last one is on the upper level up here. No, not here. Like we go here. And that secret room in the corner here. Oh. <laughs> there you go. No, we figured it out. Whoa. So, no, now we have to find our way back to the exit, but thankfully the time limit stops. This also shouldn't be too difficult. I think we just go up here and back out here. First try! <laughs> Between us, first try. And how many jiggies is that in this level? I think we're still missing a few of them. So don't forget about that that uh, that nifty checklist it gave us. Like that's so fascinating, and I'm so curious if the original game had that. Don't forget, next week we're gonna be doing stop and swap shenanigans. So don't miss that. Um, so yeah, we gotta flip the the train back over. There's a whole bunch of mumbo stuff we have to do, but there's still some banjo things we haven't done. Where was that aqua tunnel again? In the meantime, though, I think we can come in here now. And I think we can break her out. There you go. Woohoo! <laughs> oh man, we're so happy that you're free. Get ready for button mashing! It really has to show you where she's going too. And in fact, before I do that water tunnel, since we're gonna be looking for it anyway, I think we should take the opportunity to go get some more air. I think we have found all the attacks we need currently to unlock a few new things. So we're gonna go back to the first level, which will actually end up connecting to this level anyway, so it works out perfectly. As well as back to Spiral Mountain. Because there's one more thing we can do there which will help us out a lot. Make the rail, <laughs> now I know, right? Or maybe we should race her first. And then, um, you know, get the finger pain out of the way. That sounds like a good idea. And then we'll have, uh, you know, the Cheeto pages to take to him as well. How many Cheeto pages do we have? Um, yeah, there's one more in this level, which we know where that is. Oh, not the Jinjos. Okay, so you know, we probably won't reach 10 tonight then. Ugh. Not even health again. So here we go, here we go. This is everyone's least favorite part of Banjo-Tooie. Racing this thing. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs> favorite NES game that starts with the letter B? Ooh, Bard's Tale, Battletoads Double Dragon. One, th those two are, are very at the top. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Blue Marlin's good. Um, there's, there's a lot of good NES games to start with B. Oh, birds. You know, of course, there's, there's Blaster Master, which is pretty fun. I did, I did that whole ranking video of the bees. Um, 
Oh, Bucky O'Hare! Bucky O'Hare is such a good B game. Alright. Um, so normally I need to put this on like a table. The problem with this though is Rareware games have such bad rubber banding. It's almost worth it to let her pass you a little bit and then catch up because if you get too much of a lead... Wait, oh, it's, it's X. Oh. Right? Like if I get too far ahead of her, then she'll like really kind of beat me. But this is the first race with her. I don't remember it being too bad. It's more the next time you meet that isn't so fun. I hate this part when you're a kid, your arm kind of figures, right? Now, see, she's probably gonna... She's probably gonna catch... In fact, I shouldn't be doing my, my better strat yet. I should save some finger power for later. This is like the most basic button pressing right now. I'm not even trying. But see, she's probably gonna rubber band really bad now. We're getting some distance from her. This goes on a long time. In fact, this is the first time I've ever button mashed on an Xbox 360 controller. Their buttons have a very interesting texture to them compared to like the N64 buttons. You, they require a bit more of force to press down. Is this the end? Okay. Mash, 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 mash. <laughs> oh boy. Click, click, click. Can you hear that? <laughs> is there like a rapid fire Xbox controller? <laughs> <laughs> Might be a good investment. Battleship! Alright. So, that's one race. We will now need to race her again to uh, get the Cheeto page. So we're not done yet. I wonder if they, re if they reduced the difficulty at all. But again, I don't remember the Glitter Gulch mine races being that bad. If I don't pick that up, you don't think it will despawn? Like, I'm really curious. Okay, it stays there. Thank goodness. She will call you a cheater. So see, last time I let her get a bit of a lead as well, and that seemed to work out. See, like I can, I have my finger power still, so I can get a bit of a boost if I need to. I feel like this is a good pace for now. Let her think she's winning. It's even... Wow, she, she's really slow the first time. I don't know if she's any faster, like, dipping between the, the Jiggy and the Cheetah Page race. Or if she's, like, just literally just do the same thing twice. So you can see how she kind of speeds up when you're ahead of her. Go, Banjo, go! Go! Oh, shoot, I thought that was the end. That's why I started speeding up so much. Go, Banjo, go! Yes! <laughs> Rear rubber banding is the worst. Let's hope that, that uh, the Jiggy I didn't pick up didn't, like, despawn. <laughs> oh, I don't see it, guys. Please don't tell me that the Jiggy despawned. Uh-oh. I am worried. I am worried that because I didn't pick it up, it's gone. Please tell me that it's at the other end of the track. Like, I just wanted to see two items side by side. If that breaks my whole game. <laughs> I might be the first person to, like, never pick that up instantly. <laughs> and it's, everything's broken now. Where's the end? I kind of got mixed up with my directions here. Uh, okay, now this is back to the, the beginning. Bloody bear. <laughs> I should have just picked it up. Why did I tempt fate? Why did I tempt fate? Why do I assume that games are well made and not glitchy messes? That's my mistake. That's my absolute mistake. 
Where is the end of this freaking track? I'm so confused. I feel like we're going in circles. Like, I didn't pick up the Jiggy, right? Like, I was silly and didn't pick it up. <gasps> Thank goodness. <laughs> I was really scared. Okay. Now that that, uh, that heart attack is over. Thank God, says <laughs> Play Eagle. Agreed. Okay, so mumbo time now, I think. Actually, no. Actually, yeah, no, I said we were going to go and do a couple things in the previous level since they will lead back to this level anyway. It's probably a good thing we didn't leave the level, though. So there, it is a well-programmed game. I take it back, Rareware. I am sorry. Redo Electric Boogaloo, says Daniel. That's good. That's really good. All right, we're back here. So, to the... Oh, oh that's right. We can do this for a Jinjo, I think. Ooh. Two out of nine. We can do this. To go back to the very beginning. Jinjo Village. Yeehaw, says Diego. I'm so happy. I was so worried there for a second. Where's the exit? Follow the tracks. Gives you good advice. And there's two more things we can now do out in Spiral Mountain. You may, you may remember that one of the very first things we saw after we started the game was a giant boulder with a fish under it. And it is very, very important that you come back and do this. Don't forget about him. No, don't tell me. Hmm. Maybe I can't do this yet. <laughs> Actually, I think, um... Okay, good. I thought maybe we need to do something else to, to pick him up. But no, we just kind of grab him there. And we can take him back to the water here. And again, this is really, really nice. Perhaps these extra bubbles, so we get double air for doing that. Which is very important. And he also teaches us how to swim faster if we hold A and X at the same time. So let's go underwater just for fun. See, see all the air we have now? It's great. So this is holding just X. And this is holding A and X, so he starts kicking his feet as well. I don't know if you- I don't think you can do that before he teaches you. So, yeah, very, very useful that you go and do that. And uh, that will help us immensely in the upcoming parts. Another thing we want to do is open up this door. With grenade eggs. And now we can go get that guy. And that concludes the... Nintendo 64 game packs that you can find, which were included as a substitute for the fact that Stop and Swap was not implemented as it was originally intended to be, where you get the eggs in the first game and then transfer them to this game. Uh, it never ended up working out that way. So, as a consolation, they inserted these game packs around, which were supposed to have those Stop and Swap items. But... It was never quite the same, so it's really cool that we're going to be able to experience that legitimately. At least I understand that's how it's going to work. Coming up. You're sweating bricks, Plague. I, I was really expecting it to be gone, so I'm very happy. But here we go, last game pack. And no ice key in any of them. They're all eggs, which is interesting. Bronze egg. And don't forget the last thing I want to do before we leave here is give Cheeto a visit for the first cheat, which I believe will be feathers, but we'll find out. We haven't used gold feathers once yet, which are like the most useful thing in the first game. And even though they start you off with them in this game, it doesn't break everything. 
New secret cheat! First cheat is feathers! So we go to Mayhem Temple and enter the code chamber. So yeah, now we got some stuff to go back to Mayhem Temple for. You don't understand, of course we do. Please no cheating, says Play Eagle. Well, the cheats that Cheeto gives you are not really cheats. They are more like upgrades, called cheats in a, in a funny sort of way. But if you really want to cheat, you can look up online. Well, that was cool. You know, like actual cheats that you can enter any time without unlocking them. Uh, and you can really break the game that way. But we're not gonna be doing that. We're gonna use the ones as they are learned. Uh, yes, Daniel. I will do that for you. So yeah, there were a couple of rocks in this level we had to break, right? Yes, yes, okay, so. Mm, where do we want to start? Actually, yeah, so the one was hut to go. So instead of that way, we go this way. Cheats in this game are like pee, -pee up in Pokemon. Exactly, exactly. Or like getting like, you know, a bigger, uh, you know, quiver or something in uh, Legend of Zelda. So we do feathers. Oh, again, the, uh, the stick is weird in this one. F. If I get like a letter wrong, do I have to start all over again? Oh, you do too. That was intentional, by the way. Okay. You gotta be really careful about it. Eggs is gonna be so nice and easy to enter. F E A T H. Same letter twice? Yes. Oh, I almost missed. Alright. Double ma uh, max uh, red and gold feathers. And is that like activated now? Um, it probably is. Okay, so you want me to try Banjo Kazooie? Fortunately, not doing anything. So now, if we go over to this wall now, is it turned on? It is off. It is now on. So we can now hold up to 200 red feathers and 20 gold feathers. And it just gives you a max right off the bat. Nice. Which is interesting because even when it's double, it's max 100 red feathers in the first game. Lots of cheats uh, in the last game if you do use eggs. So next thing we can do is go back to here. And we're gonna go near Mumbo's hut. And this should be near that door we can enter? I think? Yes. Did you ever see one episode of Wheel of Fortune where someone spelled the puzzle right but couldn't pronounce right? Well, that has happened from time to time, yes. Yeah, there's some, there's some definitely funny moments like that. So this one. We're gonna jump in here. And go under this hole. And remember, hold. So yeah, you can just hold X and B, or X and A, which would be B and A on the 64. You go like super fast now. We can open up this rock. And yes, yeah, so down here, there will be pillars, and if we hit the right ones, the jiggy will kind of work its way down to where we can reach it. As a kid, I didn't understand that you could come down here and do this, so... I didn't, uh, you know, get that you hit the pillar and the and the jiggy goes flying. So I was a little confused as a kid. Oh, but there's a timeline. It's easy, though. Like, there's not really any need for there to be a time limit, and the cutscene each time is kind of annoying. She'll delete your save. So that's in the original game. If you enter too many cheats, like opening levels you're not supposed to have access to yet, uh, or note doors, she will, um, she actually will delete your save file after three of them. It's pretty scary. 
And I've done a video all about that. One of my most popular videos was made way back when, looking at cheats in Banjo-Kazooie, which was pretty cool. But alright, last Jiggy from this level. And this is exactly where we want to be, because after we surface from the water here, we will have that prison cell that we unlocked with the, uh, the secret code. And inside of that was another rock that once we break will lead us right back to Glitter Gulch Mine. Like this was the most perfect kind of loop we just had to do. Like it was backtracking, but it was actually kind of nice backtracking. <laughs> no, he's not. How did we manage to get here before her? And remember, this is for some reason the room that the video before we unlocked the level was showing. Like, why they thought this was the most significant part of the level is anyone's guess, but... Okay. So what does that leave us with? Let's pause and have a look at our totals. Mayhem Temple should be done. 10, 3, 3, 2, 100, 5, 3. In just over an hour. Perfect. Like, almost right on an hour. Beautiful. Uh, this level, we got one more Jinjo, one more Honeycomb, and four more Jiggies. Now, one of the Jinjos I mentioned previously, we can't get yet. Uh, because you access that area from another level. Um, some of the Jiggies as well. Like, I think I need the Spring Shoes for one of them. But we do need to then go back to that, um, the flooded cave, and then there's the train, and then the, uh, the rock with Mumbo. Okay. You remember Kazooie eats the Jiggies, right? I missed the dance they did in the, the first game when you collect the Jiggy for sure. Tar Heels got knocked into the tournament, Alabama beat him. Rain knock. I'm not, uh, not... College basketball, uh, doesn't really come up on the radar in Canada. Definitely seems like a much more of a bigger thing in the States, but that's cool if you follow it. I know there's March Madness and all that. Victorian record player reminds you of... Vic, Victrola record player reminds me of Cranky Kong. Oh, that's true, that's true. Spitting out the chickies. Okie dokie, so... Let's see, what should I do next? I, I think it's Mumbo time, so... Mumbo is very conveniently located right here, but then where was that... That watery cavern? It's bothering me. And I can't remember... Where that was. Um... Like, I think we opened it... With... With the TNT, right? That's right, there was like a, there was like a house. And we just blew up the whole house. And I think it was behind that. Is that here? Hmm. No, it wasn't here, I don't think. No, this is that dark area. If anyone remembers, this isn't like a spoiler. Feel free to remind me where I found that thing. This is where we, I think we turned the lights back on. Top 14. Hello, Psycho Scott Brothers. Welcome. Hope you're having an excellent night as we're playing through Banjo Tooie here. Uh, currently finishing up the second level after just 100%ing the first one. And it's been a lot of fun. Hope that you're having a great night. We're currently looking for something that I can't quite remember where it is. <laughs> uh, that's what happens in Banjo Tooie. The levels got so big that I forget where things are like half the time. We also had a scare earlier where we thought maybe a Jiggy had despawned, but thankfully, it was a false alarm. Alright, where else can I go? Um, again, I don't think it was... or was it down beside Mumbo? Actually, it might have been down here. Yes, I think it was. Because I was commenting about how it was so hard to fit through those doors, and I think we come over here, 
and no, this is just back to here again. Ugh. So many areas in this level look exactly the same. Super Tom brother, during the Super Bowl last month, someone showed you a colorist picture of one of the players at the first Super Bowl in 1960. Isn't it funny to think that there was like still black and white television and black and white movies and black and white photos in the 1960s? Like it doesn't seem like it should be that far away. And yet, like, uh, technology just kept jumping and jumping and jumping and getting better and better and better. That's amazing, you know, you just look back a decade and it's like things are already so different. But where am I forgetting this? Where am I forgetting something? It's not there, it's not there. It's not in there, that's where Canary Mary was. Like, this, just this one thing I'm forgetting somewhere, the, the, the water cave. This is where I need to bring Mumbo over here. There's something over here? Yes! Okay, what is this? What is this? This might be it. Ooh, no, this isn't it. It's the toxic gas cave. And uh, notice that since we have more air now, it also helps us in here, which is nice. Notice this version included the finished version of Bottle's Revenge. Yeah, wouldn't that have been neat? Sometimes I wish that all this game's on Rare on PC and Remake. Uh, Ball's messing with the game again, Andrew. <laughs> it would make for some excellent creepy passes, says Brainock. No, it's, it's somewhere. It's somewhere. Again, this, this whole level looks the freaking same. Maybe this one. Maybe this one. Oh, oh. No, 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 this isn't it. <sighs> I guess we could go do the mumbo stuff. But it's just bothering me because, like, it shouldn't be that hard. And I always say, like, don't forget, and then I always forget myself exactly where I want to go. Like, is this it? This could be it. Oh, I found it. Like, it's this, every single passageway in this level is identical. So yeah, this is uh, a big flooded maze you have to navigate. Uh, very useful to come here with the extended air meter, plus the ability to swim faster. And I have no memory of exactly where the correct path is or what's hidden in this maze. I mean, obviously there's like a jiggy somewhere. She's like, oh, you can't even get in the air here. This is, this is gonna get nasty real fast. Like, I don't need eggs. Just imagine that now you add in like, uh, you know, Rusty Bucket Bay water that drains, like, you know, your air twice as fast. Like, what's here? I should be getting my graph paper out, honestly. Ooh, this is scary. I don't like this at all. Okay. At least, uh, at least air is dropping relatively slowly. Ugh. Ugh. I hate this. I hate this. I'm gonna get so lost. I think, okay, okay, I think I have my bearings. So let's check this room and I'm gonna go back and get air. But see, like if you don't come here with the extended air, good luck to you. Okay, so I understand where we are. So if I go here, here, and this should be the entrance again. <laughs> it's, it's freaky, it's freaky. Want me to help you play, Eagle? Uh, I think we're doing well, but if there's anything you want to point out, feel free. Why doesn't this game have any maps, says Diego, right? Yeah, there's no map at all. You got to the first time you play... Yeah, Mumbo is not fun to play as. I feel like they thought that was like a... Like a super cool new feature they were adding in, and yet I don't know anyone who likes playing as Mumbo. <laughs> yeah, he's really slow. Okay, so this is a dead end. I figured as much. So we go through here. Oh, the fast swimming is so nice. If you're not good at swimming, you know, this part and... Oh, is that it? Is that like literally as slow as this is? I thought there was more hidden in here than that. But you know, Clanker's Cavern's a tough one. And I thought that the, this maze was much longer. I like how the, it, you know, provides light. There's nothing hidden here, right? You got it, says Plague Eagle. Yeah, apparently it was a 
you know, in, in my memory, it was a lot worse than it actually was. And it doesn't look like there was any Cheeto pages or anything hidden in there, which is interesting. Yeah, there's like, can't go up here. Huh. Okay, so, mumbo time. You gotta actually jump up these stairs. I think if you bought a console, you just buy older games. You never got to play back then. That's a perfect thing to do. You know, check out the uh, check out the classics. Some people are so focused on you know the new stuff coming out, but oh, there's so many good games that I bet most people probably haven't played out there. Don't be afraid to check them out. So do I need to do anything in here first? Okay. Oh, interesting. Can I do this or like maybe maybe you can use um Okay. <laughs> it's really scary. Was this like the one time you have to use this attack? Yes. Um I feel like this was a bad move though. Now I have to get back somehow. So we hit the switch. That was important. Again, we could have used gold feathers for that. We, I don't think we've used gold feathers once yet. This is officially a no gold feathers run. Okay, Mumbo's house should be right around here too. Right? I thought it was right around here. Anyway, there's a pad here too, I think. So we can do this too. I hope the N64 version is not too expensive these days. Xbox X has the Xbox and newer compatibility, so it's cool. Yeah, you can play this on a variety of things now, which is very nice. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. So now we're playing as Mumbo again. Yeah, he's kind of slow. He doesn't have all the cool techniques that Banjo and Kazooie have. And his attack kind of sucks. But there is an achievement for killing like 20 guys with the, the magic stick. So we should try and work on that. Like, do you count as an enemy? <laughs> Probably not. This guy's gonna count as an enemy, so come over here. Magic stick time. I should just keep doing this until we get the achievement. Like, go inside his house and, like, come back. Actually, there's so many of these guys around, it's so convenient. If only there was, like, a counter to, to keep you up to date. This is probably gonna hurt me. <laughs> if that counted as a kill, though, it was worth it. What about this guy? Remember, it's all about the gamer score. Nothing else matters. Mumbo looks like a Muppet. Yeah, he's like way smaller in this game than he was in the uh, the last one, which is weird. Oh, he can't go inside Wumba's wigwam. That's funny. The outside the crushing shed sounds good. But before we worry about that, time to get some more enemies. We have to have like at least 10 by now. The one good time when enemies respawn when I'm trying to get an achievement. Yeah, I wonder if I go back to the other place if those guys will be back. Let's we will just spend like another two minutes doing this. I don't have to think about the achievement anymore. <laughs> Play Eagle. Ugh. All right, let's get these guys. There can't be many more now. What's everyone else think about achievements? Did everyone else have a phase where, you know, you tried to get as many achievements or as many trophies as possible? I think they're fun to collect. Like, you don't have to get them, but if you want them, it's nice when they're there. Yeah. 
Is that all for this area? There's one guy like, way over there. The warp pads are actually pretty close together in this level. It, it seems like a really big level because everything kind of looks the same and you get lost a lot, but it's actually not that bad. Hello, Christian! Welcome back! Hope you're having a great night. We're wrapping up the second level. We've done everything now in Spiral Mountain and in Mayhem Temple. And we just got some stuff to finish up here and we're done. But, uh, you know, it's easier said than done, of course. We're also just trying to get this achievement here, which any second now will hopefully activate. I'm sure there was an achievement for this. It said kill like 20 dudes with Mumbo's magic stick. Uh, <laughs> okay, I won't do that super top, don't worry. Uh, you never really 100% achievements, other than a Steam game and Forza Horizon 5, but Forza has other ones too. Yeah, I mean, it's all about, like, if you enjoy a game or not, right? If you enjoy a game, then go for it, but if you don't, then, like, don't, you know, force yourself to do it. Come on. I, 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 there's no way I didn't read that achievement right. I know that they respawn so quick, I can just kind of go back and forth here. Okay, a few more and I'll give up. I mean, I could also check the achievements, right? Uh, we got two of them so far. Kill any 20 bad guys with any of these attacks. Mumbo's wand, your pants attack, or the daddy T-Rex. Like, so we're, we're, we have to be almost there. Just like a couple more. And then we can never worry about this again. Yeah. Oh. oh! Hey! <laughs> you know? After I, the, the second I check the achievements, it finally activates. Come up, go on, up, go. So this is good that we activated the, the conveyor belt in there. After we send this rock through the roof, Rush. Watch, this song is going to get copyrighted or something because I didn't talk over the whole thing. There it goes. We had to see the whole journey of that rock from beginning to end. And we're still watching. You're blaming Rare if it gets copyrighted, Daniel. Thank you. And just spews out the chunks. And this is cool. Listen to the sound as we pick up the pieces. There you go. So that's all those. And we want to go back to where the entrance was. And I believe this is the last thing we have to do with Mumbo. So there's different colors of these pads, right? I'm not sure what the significance of those are. And maybe some of them are only like a one-time deal while the other one can be done multiple times. <laughs> right? It even says it right on the pad. I never noticed that. It's so HD. Cheers the rare to make an N64 game feels as slow as CD PlayStation game says to you. Alright, the train. Reactivated. Can you go in the train as Mumbo? Kind of? I don't think you're supposed to. I'm ki like, oh, he kind of like he kind of flies back. It's weird. Yeah, he doesn't. He really does not like interacting with the ladder. And before I break the game, I should probably stop. So we will do that. But yeah, with that, I think um, that's all the mumbo stuff. Unless anyone has any other thoughts on that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go get Banjo back and do the train finally. I know people have been waiting for that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
Wasn't there a train version of Power Rangers? There may have been. All right, so we sit back in the chair. Oh, then we can finally do Talon Trot again. Where's that pad? Here it is. All right, everyone, boss number two coming up. Again, remember, every level has a boss in this game. This will allow us to use the train. And so if Mumbo could get up here, I guess he could theoretically... This is my train! It won't let you use it. Who said that? One of the levels in the SNES games, they had a train level. You know, lots of video games have train levels. They're usually pretty cool. But here we go. Somehow we can walk on this very hot coals right now. Who dares at your old King Coles? This is a casual fight, you know? Where you're supposed to be a merry old soul. Yeah, so old King Cole, boss of level two. And you don't I don't think you want to touch the um the red part of the floor. Oh, there's a time limit too? Actually, okay, I can't touch the floor. So he has health. Um Yeah, see now he lights up the floor. How does this work again? Oh, air as well. Like I know. Like, I thought there was, like, spots on him that you had to shoot. Am I not remembering that correct? Okay, no, I guess you just blow him up. I must- oh, I'm- oh, I'm thinking of a different boss. You just, uh, like, right, for, for old King Cole, you just kind of destroy him <laughs> piece by piece. And with grenade eggs, it's, like, really fun. Which is why it's nice that we unlocked them already. Mighty pile of poos on my brother. Says <laughs> Tanya! <laughs> That's the weirdest boss ever. Perhaps we should sit down and talk about this. How do you even talk anymore? You don't have a mouth. Where is he? If you just want to like hang out right beside me so I can shoot you, that works too. And that was easier than the last boss. Don't you dare hit anything, I've only just polished. <laughs> the Yanko. Hey, we got an achievement for that, so it was worth it. I feel bad for him, but you gotta do what you gotta do for those gamer scores. Where am I here? Um, yes. So with that, we are now at 21 jiggies. What do our totals look like for this level? 9 out of 10. Okay, so we know where the Jinjo is. We can't access it yet. The Jiggy, we need the spring shoes to get to. Unless there's like a way to, 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 to glitch that. I'm forgetting about. It's not coming to mind. The honeycomb, I'm not sure. I know there's a spot where you need to use an attack we don't have yet to break a rock. It might be under that. So let's get out of here. Go to the options just for fun. And go to that checklist. Why not? So behind the exterior waterfall, which is exactly what I'm talking about. The ones that um, we need the spring shoes for. So I think that might be where we wrap up for the night. Two levels done in like almost... Uh, you know, in about four hours. Like, what, what time is it? Like, nine to... Yeah, so... Yeah, that's been a good length stream, I think. What's everyone think of Banjo-Tooie so far? I like Banjo-Tooie. I think it's a really cool game, and I'm really happy to be playing it 100% again after so long. And I'm... Yeah, I just really enjoying it. 
You know, when I think back, uh, back to it as a kid, it always seemed like it was too big, but... You know, it helps that I kind of have a gist of what I should be doing, I guess, <laughs> compared to the first time I played. But, uh, you know, especially if you've never played this before, I'd love to hear if you think it's overwhelming or not. Very good, says Daniel. Thank you. Happy that you enjoyed. So with that... And I like, too, you can go into the options here, objects and items. And look at all the stuff you've picked up. So that's all we really got in our inventory right now. Ooh, I'm really excited for that. And stop and swap, too. Um, that's where we're at right now. Wasn't there a third one? Maybe not. No, there's two in the Spiral Mountain. And then the one by Jinjo Village. I think we're good in that regard. Let me just see one thing here. Wow, so yeah, so just approaching four hours. So that was a pretty good length stream, I think. Definitely can't start another level, or that'd be another another hour or two at this point. The levels only get bigger and more more complex. So I think this is a good spot to, to end off for the night. Any closing comments, closing thoughts? Did I forget anything? Again, I think all the stuff in there we need to come back at a later point. But we did pretty well. Looks fun, but I guess I'd have to get used to the size of the game. Yeah, I don't know what it was with Rare, thinking that they had to keep going bigger and bigger and bigger. And Glitter Gulch Mine actually isn't that big, but just because it's kind of complicated and, you know, everything looks the same, it makes it feel more overwhelming than it really is. But again, it only gets crazier from here. <laughs> By the end, oh my gosh, uh, the levels will face. But yeah, thanks everyone for joining tonight. Hope you had fun. Let's do a uh, save and quit and see what happens. Yes, we're sure. And <laughs> I hate how it uh, you know gives you a game over just for quitting. Like that's not right. And there you go. Can't wait for Witchy World Diego. Yep, so uh, tune in next Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern for the for the continuation. Again, we did two levels today, plus a whole bunch of kind of extra things. Next week, assuming what I have heard about the Stop and Swap stuff is correct, uh, we will actually be playing Banjo-Kazooie 1 first and collecting that, and then cashing all of that in um, and unlocking all that stuff. So if you're excited to see what that's all about, definitely make sure you're here for the beginning of the next stream. But otherwise, thanks everyone. Christian, glad you could join as well. Christian, Diego, Super Tom Brother, um, Eagle, everyone. Diego, Daniel, hope you're having a great night and take care. And yeah, no game over cutscene in this one. They, they really cheaped out on it. Uh, just boots you back to the title screen. See ya, everyone. Ha 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 ha!